course, Andy Walker is such a strong player. But now the question is, what character is he going to use against this Aki? You know, is he going to fill? Because, I mean, we've talked about how Ken really can cause Aki some problems, right? Uh, is that what he's going to go with? Because he has that as a third possible option here. Well, in the early days of the Bracket Reset World War for the UK, these two are actually dominating it really well. Uh, Ending Walker came first and Broski comes second. That's when they're doing Ryu versus JP. Mm. Uh, the third one, I think Broski came ninth and Ending Walker won that one. The fourth one where Broski won, Ending Walker forgot to sign up. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're laughing. He forgot to sign up. Don't worry. It does no, happen I mean, to it happens. It happens a lot. A lot. So, so, so they, yeah. these guys were actually pretty neck and neck for the early days okay, of Bracket Reset okay. Warrior. Um, I think Ryu or Ken would suffice here, unless he wants to surprise the DJ. I mean, uh, Brosi can't express his disdain enough about DJ, so <laughs> it might actually work on his uh, mental game. It could work. So true. There's a plethora of options here, pretty potent ones. Um, that just could pick, work here. Yeah, so Just pick the DJ and get Broski uh, frustrated by default. Huh? I mean, look, the one thing he, look, he's already put the nail in the coffin. I'll just stick with DJ the whole way mm. through, but I'm thinking like these are not bad options to have here, right? And now. DJ, he's gonna, he's gonna there go. and go. you can tell he's done the face. Okay, smart now. <laughs> but he's done the face. He's like, oh, he's done the face. All right, we go. I mean, listen, DJ is the definition of obnoxious, where he gives it a new meaning in the dictionary. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, definitely uh, a frustrating character to go up against. That was a punish counter on that drive rush there, too. And see, what you want to remember as well, if there's anyone who's very meticulous or just as meticulous as Broski, he is ending Walker. He does a lot of lap work, man, yeah, in and, these and, uh, fighting games. So. He actually uh, perfect carries the jump in, and yet ending Walker was still able to land and tech the throw, mm. but didn't actually throw him out of the, the, the landing frame. Oh, he's trying to go for a throw bait there. This is going to be huge damage here. Is he going to do it? No, he swayed, and Brosi just said, sod it. Yeah, I'm now he's trying, to, <laughs> he's trying to set up the, obviously, the, the burnout over here with that combo into the drive oh, drive okay. impact. Empty jump into throw here. Shade to cover the approach here. Try to get the poison effect with the stand hard punch target combo here. But either player can take this round here. Oh, no. And that's one of the hardest things about the slither is if you go into that slide right there and there's the opponent of, dash forward. There's a couple of frames where you're committed to the slide. Yeah. You can't block it, so you've got to cancel out of it. But here's yeah. the thing. I imagine Aki's going to take a very similar approach to what uh, she did against Guy earlier today. So... It's just that DJ is uh, significantly faster and he hasn't been arrested for speed limiting. So. <laughs> yeah, I always said DJ stands for like diesel jet or something because he's just Ooh. zipping across the screen over here. Nice, oh, uh, tries to go for a shimmy. Yeah, just the conversion there out of the corner, slides out there with a the snake step. Okay. Out. What a with punish there with the crouching roundhouse and gets Ooh. the DI as well. And he's going to get okay. full conversion. He went for a micro walk there, got an airborne conversion instead. He's going to close out this round here, Broski. I really like that, though, because when he threw out that, you know, Nightshade, and then he's dashed forward, that, the, kind of like that drive rush that he had kind of gave him a preview of what Ending Walker was doing, so he knew that the drive impact was going to catch him uh, through that fireball. The slide that's plus two at best on block there, and he's trying to find a way out, but I'm not sure if Ending Walker's going to give him the light of day. He might have to slide out very shortly. That's why he went for the... <laughs> oh, he did slide. Okay. He might have to slide out very wow. shortly. And then he spends the... I, mean, I was surprised. I, I mean, Ending Walker went for the hit. I thought he might go for the throw again just in case he went for the OD slide. Oh, double roundhouse, triple, triple. roundhouse. Man, this guy is so brazen and he, he blocks the greatest so bad. He can take the round throw! Oh, man. Damn. That was it's unfortunate. A little too late for that punish right there. But there we go. So close. He's going to get the anti-air. Not close it. enough for the crouch heavy punch juggle. Yeah, he wants the uh, punish counter so that he juggles. He got the counter hit instead there. Dash up throw. Uh, you can get game. the Crouch Heavy Punch juggle as well if you're okay. close enough. Okay. But the command throw going to find the mark. Now, I mean, the command throw can be OS'd against, right? If you just kind of do a right. delay uh, punch. However, you can also delay the kick follow-up to try to frame trap the delay punch. Pretty decent mind games around that there as well. But trapped in the corner once again. Like I said, when... Oh, nice. When Aki's cornered, she's highly susceptible to throws, right? Snake set loses the throw, Harry loses the throw as well. She's pretty kind of uh, been desperate time to get out there. And she do get presented with that opportunity. Oh, looking great here. She's taking game number one and now starting off pretty strong here in this round. Oh, traded. Perfect Harry immediately off the... Out of the air! So okay. ending, water didn't, ending Walker didn't get the full combo. 
mean, you know, I mean, he's low on dry gauge. He actually might be put in burnout. Actually, don't even need to. Gonna get the conversion into the heavy serpent lash there. And take that round, and Broski is looking to go steer clear in a 2 0 here, James. I like the way Broski's playing this matchup so far. I wonder if, uh, if he takes this, would that warrant ending Rocker maybe try to switch to the Ryu, perhaps? To Come on, see grab again. Something over there. He get Oki okay from this as well, but he goes for a micro walk. Ford HK here, Drive Rush is in, and being firm and blocking, not risking anything mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. gonna be a Drive Rush combo right there. Double and now down. you're in the corner. Safe jump set up here? Nope, just goes for the dash throw. In it out throw again. I think he's cognizant of the slide, so yeah, he's just gonna keep um, throwing, and then that's why the back dash came in there, and he still managed to get a back throw there. A little bit with a defensive throw right there. He was holding back and kind of throwing just the tech, probably. Ended up with the back throw. Of course, he's he would have liked to move. keep him in the corner. He's on a perfect parry. OD nice shit there, wasn't he? Gets a throw. He needs a big oh, hit here. Shit. And the interruption. And the craziest thing is, we saw Lex do the exact That's same right. thing yeah. earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, these guys are very brazen with their challenges against a forward hate kick and a dry rush. I'll tell you that much. But coming in, we try to get the back dash there. Heavy kick right there, controlling that space, that neutral space very well. Nice jump, uh, jump fierce there from Broski, gets the throw, he's in there, trying to get another grab maybe? Not quite. He's gonna do the full conversion, I think. Yeah, he's got the level three over it. Nope, he doesn't go for it. He goes for the overhead combo setup, the meaty overhead setup. The ending walker has seen that before, so he's oh, able to block it. Wait for a spacing trap, but there we stand, medium kick, because that forward fierce is negative four. Sort of. And ending walker getting very desperate at the moment. He needs a, a some sort of hit, some sort of knockdown. Oh no. Sneak in there. Okay, there we go. Punish counter. That's plus again. Tries to go for the just cool. Oh my oh, word. He somehow what? got it up, uh, man. This kid and this character. I don't know, mate. That was obnoxious as could be. And he gets it here. It's the weekend festival. Now, are you burnt out? I think he's just got a spec left. Yeah, oh, he's going to drive us and sway. He has to. No, he goes for the OD. That's going to hit him. Oh, it didn't reach. Listen. Hey, what is that? Please. That level three went nowhere. What on earth was that? She literally tried to poison thin air. What was that? That, that was, was Steve Reeve I've ever that seen. That was it. painful right there. That is an un pain and suffering. <laughs> he told me in a Twitter message. He said pain and suffering. Pain and suffering. I mean, he was referring to Guile at first, but you know, as you said, he That's he has feelings about DJ as That's well. Rough. So yeah, I wouldn't want my level three to just. Just land right. In I the mean, face. did he? Did he? Is he going back just to the to the la lobby just to, so he can uh, calm down at this point? Because I, 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 he's not I'd gonna... turn off the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'd turn off the game. <laughs> he's That's... not changing characters for sure no, right now. Yeah, but uh, he is definitely. See? There's some salt uh, right now. I'll never forget. Right. So in the early days of Aki. One thing I like to do when new characters come out, I like to test them against Manon because Manon's overhead is a very good way to see if you can punish something you can't. I tried to use her level two, seven frame startup against Manon's overhead. Uh -huh. it, didn't, it didn't punish it, but I done it right in the face. And Broski quoted it and said, look, this level two isn't as good as you think it is, but there are some other things that took it. <laughs> look, the seven oh. frames is up here, okay? It's in the sky. That's that's the startup. It doesn't hit the ground in seven frames, unfortunately. I'm so upset for him. <laughs> That could have been a 2-0 or something. It could have been a turnaround there, but it's one apiece right now. And sometimes you need that stroke of luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In your fine game, bracket run. Nice jackknife maximum against the cruel fate. I mean, I've always said, like, sometimes you're like, you know what? I got lucky kind of situation. But how many times have people gotten lucky against you as well? You True. take those things. Yeah, hey, listen, it works both ways, baby. Mm -hmm. And gets Ooh, the second but of slicer. course, yeah. The double right there, making it so that she couldn't punish it in time. Oh. We saw that happen with the solid puncher earlier. If he did the EX sway to get the punch in the launch, I would have converted because I see Fuda did that mm, a fair bit. Jump yeah, over you're his right, DJ. you're right. Gets the throw there. And good delay tech there from Broski. Not looking too good for him in the corner here. I'm just outside of the range. Oh, and he what can a win. Yeah. He can win. He can back off and then set the level two. Yeah, I think, I think it's it. Oh, oh, no. oh, he never really had the chance to, uh, to activate it. But actually, this is even better for him because he gets yeah. to save all that meter. Andy Walker knew it too. He, that's why he was dashing forward. He was trying to get out of the range of where uh, Broski would aim oh, that level two. What a punish kind of conversion. You can do that with a heavy so bad. Perfect parry oh, okay. back into throw. the back throw here. Is he going to try and break away with the jackknife or leave it? He will leave it here. Can you see right there, Broski backing off. Not really. Oh, jeez, again. That perfect parry against projectiles. He's on point, man. Can't fault this kid. And I think that's going to be the rounds. 
Oh, let's see. Oh, oh it is! I wow. forget the EX versus one final hit there. Damn, what calculations oh, yeah. he had there. A lot of times you see that get canceled in the super, so you forget that there's that last hit there. Man, this this game or this round right here is gonna be pivotal in this whole set. Lost frames right there, Eddie Walker getting caught low. Trying to parry again on the nightshade. Yeah, that time he didn't cancel to anything. Nice confirm. Little follow ahead. Stand medium punch, Ooh, peppering okay. away, being pesky with it, and he almost got what he needed. Yeah, but he's and gonna he's gonna get the juggle off of this, yeah. Oh. Drops the combo, doesn't get the level three. That could have been death. This will be death right here if he doesn't drop this combo. And there it is, Broski. That one's not gonna miss. That level three is gonna hit. Oh yeah, because that was in a combo game. <laughs> Listen, sometimes when you try to implement these moves by themselves, they have other ideas. In a combo, they're pretty much guaranteed to work, unless stated otherwise. But it is 2-1 here to our poison specialist. I mean, how crazy would this be if Broski's Aki is the one to send any Walker out of this tournament, and any Walker is not going for a character change. He's sticking with the DJ. I think he has faith in this pick. And I'll believe him in that pick as well. Gets away there and gets the punish kind of with the roundhouse and a okay. lovely. Oh, not even a small conversion. That was a huge conversion. Okay. Her corner carry is pretty damn good. I'm going to lap that one right there. All right. Nice That's check. It. But back throw into the corner. This is scary because the amount of damage DJ could do to you in the corner is just mental, basically. Drops away there, and he is malnourished at the moment. Here is Broski, and he could get stunned, but he's got level one to work with, and no, unfortunately he couldn't use it. And ending walk has to keep this combo short, yeah, because he has no drive gauge. And that goes for the throw reset after the meet. Oh, did he press a button? No, he didn't. No. He saw it. Yeah, he saw it. Okay, so ending Walker here trying to tie this up two to two. Got the first round on deck here, but what a check by Broski with that stand medium punch. There's a jackknife maximum there, breaking away. And is, I like that he's implemented it now. He's getting to the latter stages of this set here. And he's going to get a full conversion into the heavy jackknife and take him straight to the corner. Nice oh, anticipation yeah. from the jump as well. He knows Broski's options are limited in the corner. He's not going to slide out again. Go for the meaty throw, yeah. And so, you know, you know that they like the throw because you can't escape that. But at least that lets you predict the throws to tech them a little bit easier. But. Ending Walker doesn't care. He still manages to finish it off with the level three. Ties it up two to two. Now, this last game could be as volatile as ever because this is where Ending Walker's style and his ability as a player will really try to overwhelm it. Because he needs to get in and he can close it out. So if you make mistakes in the corner, it's going to be smooth sailing for him here. Well, I'll grab again. There you go. Ending Walker still has not countered that yet at all. Has not uh, tried to jab in that situation. Oh, D.I. gets the counter. He saw it, and when he took the two buttons beforehand, there's a huge visual indication. He's burnt out here. Only got level one to work with. Him. I gotta tell you right now, in this top 16 that we've seen so far, the raw drive impacts have not been falling. I mean, they have been being countered consistently. Well, as you say that, James, ah, I just hold my Red Bull for a second. That didn't kill. Just commentator curse. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, what dude. happened? He came out with the puddle instead. That was definitely an executioner that he did not yeah. want. The shoe is on the other foot here. Oh boy. That is a te terrible situation for Broski. Oh, back dash. I thought we were going to do double sway for the sake of it, mate. This is where you can be really stubborn, Good really entire. disrespectful. What a prediction on that neutral jump. I'm like, here we go, Is double. If he hits you, you're done. Yep. You're if dead. he hits you, you're just Crouching done, strong mate. is over. Yeah, EX spot. EX. Runs away. Holding the parry there, no grab, that's it. As I say that, there's the grab there from Broski trying to close the gap again. He's got to find that sweet spot. Oh, no. It's a really threatened DJ, but I don't think he's going to get the chance, James. Yeah, no life left. He's by level three. Yeah, he's oh, by he level got three, him. He, got him. Okay. he had no choice. He said, that's it. It's do or die. <laughs> We're going to increase the dosage. Here and keep go. us in this dogfight. He's got a drive rush in, mate. He's got it, surely. Oh, OD, okay. Oh, oh! What a cancel into the super! Ending Walker ready for the drive impact. What a reaction, and that is going to end it there. Ending Walker advances forward. He was in burnout. He couldn't counter drive impact. And in fact, he was in the middle of a special move anyway. And he had the wherewithal to cancel into the level three. Broski, valiant effort here. Uh, amazing 
amazing Aki play. Just a, a real good glimpse into what this character can do. But he is going to fall two to three to Ending Walker. Welcome to a brand new episode of No Neutral. I am your host, Big Hollywood Rob TV. And I'm joined here with my co-host, a special guest from the mid best. My brother, St. Cola. What's up with you, bro? First of all, that was bars, and I appreciate that. But we got to talk about what just occurred recently. FAV Cup was super hype. It was super sick. We saw all the Japanese players out there battling it out. And then also the birds, plus more. Phenom was out there cooking. And Kaba, Mena RD, Knuckle Dude, Team NA. And then now we see that 3v3 was absolutely ridiculous, bro. Like, And I know you were there uh, commentating with Damascus. You guys uh, did an amazing job calling that, by the way. But how about that grand finals? When it came down to Kaba versus Tokido and Daigo, everybody thought it was over. I thought it was going to be over, too. I ain't going to lie, considering the, the pedigree you see over there in the land of Japan. But Kaba, my man turned up like volume. He cooked. And that allowed them to stay in. And that allowed them to move on to the grand finals, where then it was Mena RD who cooked at the very end with the OCV, that finale. That was uh, ridiculous with the Blanca. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was absolutely insane. But, you know, more importantly, I would even say is the, the singles tournament when it as it relates to Japan specifically. That's the players I'm looking at. Of course, we got to give a big shout out to our FAV champion, the man himself, the evil champion, Angry Bird. This dude is absolutely insane. It's so tough to stop him right now. But we want to focus on Japan. Now, this is the thing for a few years, St. Cole, or maybe at least for two years now, mm -hmm. there's been a little bit of a shift over there in Japan. I feel like in the land of fighting game godhood, we've seen a whole lot of the new guys coming up, and it seems like they are potentially taking the crowns of the old guard, of the OGs. And those guys were still looking amazing too, don't get me wrong, but I feel like we saw a whole lot of the, the, the younger guys in these top eight positions. Now, one million dollars on the line for first place? And you think that the legends? You think that the people who built this thing brick by brick the reasons that we even call Japan the, the land of fighting game gods are not about to go get a piece. Top eight, who <laughs> did we see? We saw Tokido himself, mm -hmm. arguably the goat of fighting games. And we want to talk about another person who's in that same conversation. Daigo the Beast, Umehara. Oh. We have Moke, of course, on the younger side himself. And then, of course, um, the 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 years-long fatherhood, powerhood, uh, power-up at this point, my man's Sako up there one of the older competitors we have in the world of street fighter at least to be playing at the highest level and with That's those true. reactions you cannot tell whatsoever saint i think that when it comes to uh, this cpt japan we might have one of the ogs taking it we might but there's a lot of new guard coming through yo my boy kabe has been coming through on that kid he was at the top eight regional world warrior for japan which is arguably the hardest one the most difficult one to get through he got there he qualified you could even say somebody like uh you know fudo who's been like more of a uh bridesmaid never the bride finally coming through and clutching out he qualified through that cpt that very cpt as well so yeah he maybe he's old guard but you know he hasn't really had that that big win especially at like a cpt that would be like a million dollars behind it but maybe more than new guard i guess maybe shoot though kakaru any of those cats could cook up could clean up bro it's any so of those hard people. to call this region, man. Like, if you had to bet money on this region, you would not be happy whatsoever because you might as well just, to some degree, pull a name out of a hat. But to me, when I see Tokido cooking up the way that he is doing, man, like, I, I feel like we got to a point with him where we are so used to how amazing he is. So I think we might not give it enough credit. This dude is ridiculous right now, Saint. Tokido is cooking up. I mean, he is in the top spot in the Street Fighter League Japan. Uh, grand finals for his team i mean fpv gaming one of the most consistent players on that team which is in grand finals is tokido he's out there so is bon chan so is sako and now we're talking about the young guard where you say coming through also cooking up too on his side of things they're gonna be fighting against team detonation focusing which consists of nauman john takauchi fudo and itabashi zangief or itabashi mommy muscle no matter which way you call him, he's still gonna be the same dude dumping Itabashi out the damage. Mommy muscle is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get when you pick that character. You get that monker, bro. You don't got a choice. But those are the two teams that will be playing out Street Fighter League Japan. We're gonna be seeing those same cats that are playing out at the finals of Street Fighter League Japan on the 13th go to battle right before for this qualifier. It's the same players you see in Street Fighter League Japan move over to the finals. I feel like they get emboldened. They get that practice. They have to play every single week. They have to keep up with the meta. They got to keep up with the players they got to fight against. And it just makes them even more powerful. They get to play people like Big Bird, Angry Bird continuously. They've got that experience from people from around the world. I feel like that only makes you stronger. 
But I'll tell you what, man, having a wild card like Itabashi Zangief over there on Detonation, would you say that Detonation at this point, they have a whole lot of momentum going in? And FAV, they're sitting on, on, on the winner's side. They, are, they made it through grand finals already. Them having a, new, a unique team, they got Rashid on that team. They have a Ken, but they have a Marisa. And then behind that, they got a DJ. That's a lot of variation. There's a lot of utility on that team where I'd say FAV Gaming is like about the powerhouses, the top tier out here. The utility on Detonation is what kept them uh, stable and able to get that victory in the second half of the season. That's why we've seen them get that second place part in terms of playoffs and then clean up Sasuke Kong, Sokomoto, that final game. It's still going to be close. I may give a slight edge to MVP Gaming, but I would not be surprised if Detonation takes it. Either way, fantastic play. That finals is going to be sick. Y'all better tune in. The 13th of this month will be the finals. We'll be seeing who moves over to fight the U.S. and EU teams at the World Championship at Capcom Cup. When it comes to like a uh, big matchups like this, especially of course team tournament, um, your mentality is so important. Having leadership is important. Do you believe that there is a clear leader on Team Detonation, or a, and a clear leader or for FAV as well? And if so, who? I mean, it's, I think it's the appointed leaders. They've done a great job. Sako for FAV Gaming, he's got that experience, even though it's at the same level as the others. You know, I feel like you know he's been benched a little bit more. He's been able to see a lot more and give help to his team. His team has has said that. For uh, Team Detonation is Itabashi. I feel like Itabashi, the way he understands this game, he's been giving a lot of tips to his team and how to fight things like, uh, you know, shoot those Marisa, for example, because he's played that character, or just the mentality of the other, uh, the other players in terms of Mago and stuff. So I do feel like the team captains themselves have been leaders. That's not to say the other play players on the team haven't given that sort of energy or, or that sort of knowledge out, but I think that the captains have been doing a fine job. But if you have good team captains, you're only going to find success. I feel like if you're a team that does not have that that synergy or you're not able to ride with your captain and go find that victory that's just how we've seen that league the ones that have the best captains i feel like that's a big part of why they're getting that victory one more thing about fav cup so of course players from all around the world were over there and how about the fact that my man's phenom was over there doing the greatest the most legendary or the most disgusting depending on your perspective level of downplaying i have ever seen i think ken might get buffed in the next season because of what he did that you know the ministry of propaganda has hard been, been hard at work for a long time now yes. but i think this was the peak of their efforts saying what were we seeing on twitter we're seeing is a lot of uh truth telling from the side of you know, he goes to player to player asking them their top fives <laughs> ken not in that top spot in fact sometimes ken seventh place listen chris t spitting me spitting ken not top five baby who's out there it's chun lee it's dj it's luke of course and it's jp and it's guile it's You're a few of the characters even rasheed yes i agree yeah but i this, agree this is my issue saying okay 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 because maybe you're right perhaps maybe maybe okay but this is my right. thing in a world of street fighter find me a situation where you can see all of these ken players perform well all these kids perform well and no matter what the truth is as long as that's the results I have never seen the Street Fighter community let that character be downplayed or considered not top five. I've never seen pro players <laughs> look at a character, ha have multiple people winning with them. I don't care how good the players is. Don't tell me that. Because okay. when it's yeah. a million uh, Karens or or whatever it may be, or Cammies or whatever it may be, uh, they are, or JPs, oh, that character's ridiculous. That character's godlike. That character's OD. We mm -hmm. got to say the same thing here. I just have never seen it. We are in unprecedented territory. You, um, the fact that even something just simple as Angry Bird winning, did we not just have a Ken versus Ken grand finals? Yeah, okay, but where are the Lukes that weren't invited, all right? But, but I, there was a Ken did versus a, Did a Ken get through the LCQ? It was, what, what character got through the LCQ? Come on now. Oh, Chun Li, Chun Li, Chun Li, Chun Li, uh, Chun Li. Okay, 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 okay. Was it Ken? Those, well, look, those players were invited. They were invited. Those players were invited. Those kids were invited. Thing, though, to be fair, yes, Chun Li, ridiculous. But this is my thing. They're not just saying that he's not better than Luke. It's, it's mm -hmm. went past that. Now it's, he's not even top five in the game. And I'm not even saying that he is or he's not. I'm just saying mm -hmm. I have never seen the FGC <laughs> allow it to be a X character versus X character in grand finals of a stack, super stack tournament. And win Evo and whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. And, and Tokido play. <laughs> Tokido is playing a non-top five character? Hey, listen, Big Bird said that the only reason he ain't playing Luke is that he said the character was boring. That's from what Big Bird so said that when he talked to- So you think for a $2 million to... 
Jacko, you don't give a damn about fun. <laughs> when he been playing top tier his whole damn life, <laughs> Dirty Tokido, Vega. What? I saw Tokido jumping up on that cage with Vega, and now he want to have fun. When did Tokido possibly <laughs> drop Akuma? Dang. You know what? The ministry, we, we kind of getting hurt, though. That's, that's a good point. Tokido oh, playing a dang. song top five character is, is blasphemy. <laughs> Never heard of it. So, okay, okay. This being all aside, I think it's great that it's healthy, that we have a lot of characters in these top five spots or considered to be top five. It's good that we have this discussion. There's not just like, oh, it's just these characters, right? It's not just these characters alone. That means for half the cast, most of them are busted as hell in a good way in a, in a good yeah. way people complain about these characters a lot even the lower tiers out here even they're not in these top spots or considering these top spots they're still dangerous at least they've been doing work and beaking the beach shots and been winning terms out in japan and you still get clapped up by manan every so often we fight idom and i hear geep and doing work out in japan too as well we already have a geep in the capcom cup so no matter where the characters are in terms of the tier list it's so close it doesn't really matter the ministry they just want to avoid the, the nerfs and i hope they do i hope they do i, I like him i like him Okay, Saint, and you know what? Um, I'm gonna throw one more before I give my opinion. I'm gonna ask you one more thing, man. Okay, all right. CPT Japan. I want to ask if you have to. We know it's difficult. If you have to put it on one person, and there is a right answer here. If Who do you, you have winning CPT Japan making it in the Capcom Cup for this region? I'm interested to see what the chat and the YouTube comments got to say as well, uh, and events as well. But Saint, I want to know what you think. A duke into my head. I a duke into your head. Bonchan. Bonchan, I think Bonchan can do it. I think Bonchan can do it. I think the way he's playing is really hot. I like Bonchan. That is, shout out to Bonchan, absolute legend, absolute fighting game god and all of that, Evo champion, you name it. You sound insane because there is a man that they call the murder face that is also in this tournament. Do you know what it takes to have that level of consistency over the years, St. Kohler? Do you know how ridiculous his kin is? Do you know that he even has plot armor? There is not <laughs> another player in this entire tournament, maybe not another player in the world who has plot armor, even Daigo the Beast himself. Sometimes the Ume flash kick get blocked. We remember what happened with, with uh, Kakadu versus Tokido at Evo? No matter what, he, he just found a way. It's a and fair you point. think Tokido goes down. He just finished mm. the highest out of any Japanese player at FAV Cup. And then his team is also in uh in, in grand finals when it comes to Street Fighter League Japan. Do you know what the constant that we are seeing there everywhere? Hajime. You know what Hajime means, if I'm not mistaken, in Japanese? I think it means, no. like, to begin, to start. Because since the beginning, he's been a goddamn dog. Say, Cola, you can tell us who's crazy. You can tell us who is right. But I am pretty sure that we can all agree that no matter what, we are about to see some of the best play on earth, if not the very best. We have for you top 16 for CPT Japan.
He was obsessed, you see, with finding an appropriate vessel for this power. Fight with all your heart! We are supporting Capcom Cup 10 with a total prize pool of over $2 million. This is it. This is the big one here. This is the one that everybody's been waiting for. We even had to postpone this event at one point, but we are here. It is CPT Japan. And you know how it's always me, the craziest 925 entrance, and we are down to 16. And myself and Jeremy will be calling the action. No doubt, no doubt. You know, it's a very emotional time because this is the <laughs> biggest CPT, not only in terms of the people, uh, the entrance that we have, but in terms of the talent, right? A lot of these players, man, if you guys went through the list on Star GG, if you guys were tuning into every single restream, you would know it, you would see it. And now you're about to experience it here in the top 16. Before we do anything else, we have to give the big shout out to everybody that's been putting in the work to showcase all of the fine talent. Obviously, the folks over at Capcom Fighters Japan, we had Aru Hamiko, the No Motion team. You guys are doing a fantastic job. For those outside of that area, Incross, Shiramizu, you guys have been doing a fantastic yeah. job of tweeting it out into the social universe. Super Yan as well, doing it big for the states, also posting when and where the scheduling's <laughs> gonna happen, right? For a lot of these CPT events, we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be as excited for it. We wouldn't be able to see it and be as educated without you guys. So again, thank you very, very much. This is CPT Japan, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> top 16, you guys. This is the moment we've been waiting for. There's gonna be a lot of Titans in here, but it's gotta talk about it, right? What else can we say about Japan? You know how many players Dude, went <laughs> down that are notable players? Right, this I, is I a just, bloodbath for just one spot. I'm gonna lift the list the sheet up over here. The left over here, these are the people who made it into top 16. This list on the right is the collection the of collection. the big names that didn't make this top 16. And uh, before we get into the people who did, let me list some of the names here. I'm just going <laughs> to rattle these off as fast as I can. This will take one day, by Yeah, the way. I know. John Takauchi, Nemo, Bonchan, Kakeru did not make it. Moke, Dogura, Nishikin, Momochi, Higuchi, Kichipa, Goichi, Hibiki, Johnny, Fenrich, Aqua, Eita, Tachikawa, Hikaru, Haitani, Sako, Shuto, MOV, KOG, Urio. These players all did not make the top 16 here. And they, I mean, this is, this has been such a bloodbath. Some players like Tachikawa lost to the same guy twice. Shuto lost to Haitani, then beat Haitani. It's just been like all sorts of craziness over here. But I mean, honestly, the name that's on here that surprises me the most is going to be Kakeru. Honestly, he's been, he's been having such a strong start. He lost to Mizuha, then he lost to uh, Jackie, I think is how we're going to yeah. Or was it J Jackie? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and also we have some other notables like Moke. He had a lot going into this. I feel like he's been the, the hottest Chun-Li right now on the market, at least for, uh, no, I'm going to say I'm gonna say in the world. I was going to say not just Japan, but in the world. <laughs> uh, he, Only Valmaster, I think, is on that level as Moke. I right? agree, yeah. Yeah, totally, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. exactly that. And but, there's just a lot, right? Even even the folks over at uh, No Neutral, we had Rob. TV, we had St. Cola talking about who their uh, <laughs> prospects are. Obviously, we have one of those prospects and the other one not even making it. Bonchan, from the words of St. Cola, thought, you know, he was going to make it in, but Bonchan's not even in this top 16. With that in mind, let's take a look at the bracket to see the full breakdown, right? Yeah, and you know what the crazy thing about this? We were talking about Moke. We were talking about Kakeru, right? But if you look at this entire top 16, there are zero Chun-Li's and only one and a half JP's in one here. One and a half. And we one. can talk about that too, actually. One of the other halves is uh, over in the loser side. But as we have right now in the winner's quarterfinals, Narukun versus Kazunoko. That is a Kimberly versus Kami matchup. Mm -hmm. Otani versus Itabashi Zangief. Although Zangief is in the name, it might just be Mommy Marissa. But Otani <laughs> obviously playing that loop, taking a lot of notable names, which we will get into eventually. Tokido versus Akira, Ken versus Kami. <laughs> Sasamo, a huge improvement going up against Kawano. DJ versus Luke. This already 
spells a lot of danger for some of these players, man. I mean, like, <laughs> we, we talk about the ministry, we talk about, you know, uh, other top tier characters, but this is a pretty even spread of, like, yeah. skill. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at this list here. Interestingly enough, in that winner side, Cammy, DJ, and Luke are the characters that appear twice, and then Kimberly and Zangief, maybe? <laughs> Slash Morisa. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. But on the loser side, we go down over here, and we have uh, who finished second to Fudo. So Fudo did DQ himself, so he's not in this tournament because he won the World Warrior, and uh, Yamaguchi was the one who uh, basically got second place. But Yamaguchi here is on loser side, but I'm going upside down here. So let's do uh, KB and Key over here with a JP is the only true JP main here. Key is a Honda main here. Daigo, who is the only player who... I'll talk about this when we get to Daigo. Uh, but Daigo with Ken, Mizuha, Kami, and then Jackie here with the Kimberly or the JP. So he plays both JP. of them. Yeah, Mago with the Jury, and then Nauman with the Ken versus Yamaguchi's DJ. Mm. Pretty pretty good spread in terms of the character selection, in my opinion. Now, it could be a little bit sarcastic, but I will say the overall skill talent is through the roof. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that it is the way it is right now. I think, you know, we wouldn't really uh, be able to showcase as much talent in Japan uh, <laughs> throughout the, the course of the year. I mean, it is the first, the very first year, right? We're eventually going to get even more, but this is like a, a wild, a wild top 16. There's also a stat that we want to further talk about as to like who made it in the top 16 just from the top 32 as well and also the big marathon runner Daigo we'll say <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you about his stats yeah. later Brian F was actually talking about this on his stream before he signed off earlier this evening but also big shout outs to him doing the big um, analysis dude I I I, I... I can't believe we're so close to Capcom Cup already. We're so close to Capcom Cup, but even before we get to how much is at stake at Capcom Cup, there's some cash on, at stake here for this tournament as well. So we take a look at that. Of course, there's going to be uh, $2,500 for first place here, which is nice, which is nice. And $1,200 for the second and third gets $800. Fourth gets $500 here. So, of course, you know, a good $5,000 up for grabs here. But, of course, what these guys are all playing for <laughs> is the right to get into Capcom Cup 10. And that is just around the corner, over a month away. And there, there the prize pool gets up to a whopping $2 million. That's with the base. A, the base and a million dollars going into first place, which is... Oh, man, that million dollars has uh, been uh, on the minds of a lot of these players here, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about what they can do with that one million dollars. So the butterflies and the goosebumps hit me all at once when you said two million and then one million for first place. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I've, I've had the anxiety like sort of riling up inside me just because, you know, we're just uh, again, just like uh, a little bit over a month shy from mm -hmm. the big dance. And that is huge. Happy New Year to everybody, by the way. Welcome to 2024. What a way to kick it off. We made it. You know, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great feeling to see uh, all these players trying their damnedest to make it through. And again, we actually got to saw a hint of that. If you guys haven't done so already, Capcom Fighters underscore Japan or JP, they've um, showcased and, and chosen a lot of like the matches bouncing between like CFNs mm -hmm. and also some of the live streams as well to, to showcase some of the matches as like preliminary matches to get into the top 16. They've done a really fantastic job of highlighting that. Even some of the players that we weren't familiar with being showcased here as well. Yeah, and again, these, I mean, the crazy thing is I, I, I go through this list of all the people that, you know, these, these top players that we know lost to, and honestly, there's so many names here that I'm not familiar with, you know, yeah. and, and, and that just shows you what kind of talent there is over there in Japan. You know, you have players like, for example, Fenrich, I think lost his first match and then won one match in losers and then immediately lost the, the next match after that. And Fenrich yeah. is obviously such a strong player. Yeah. And again, <laughs> one of the ones that actually you wrote down was wild to me. Tachikawa is doing a fantastic job <laughs> yeah. in, in the uh, realm of, of, of Street Fighter Six. He's coached a lot of players to success in the current season of Street Fighter League Japan. But he lost to the same guy twice. Which, dude, 925 players and you get double jeopardy? <laughs> 1100 G. 1100 G was the name. I gen genuinely, I have no idea who that guy is. Okay, <laughs> to be straight, to, to, to be straightforward yeah. with you guys, I, there were so many players to keep track of. I've been doing it all day. That is difficult to like figure out. Like, who is 1100 G and how did he take out Tachikawa twice? Like, it's yeah, it's amazing.
It's amazing. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Again, this has been such a bloodbath. But here we are. We have our top 16 players ready to go against each other. And if I'm not mistaken, the first one is going to be Naughty Kun versus Kazunoko, the wild man himself, sticking with that Kami. He's been playing Kami for a couple games in a row now. And uh, I mean, the way that she plays, this character fits with uh, Kazunoko so well. But Naughty Kun bringing that Kimberly, which mm. is very interesting, a character who has not qualified for Capcom Cup yet in terms of uh, main characters, one of the uh, characters that's missing representation. Mm -hmm. So Nari Kun with the possibility, but I believe we have some words from Kazunoko himself about uh, this tournament here, and he says... I'm excited. Ah, uh, you know, that's very well-spoken. <laughs> Kazunoko, he's, not, he's a man of very few words, but, you know, getting two... At least, you know, like maybe two and a half because there's a conjunction there. Right. I think that's fine. I think it's totally All fine. Right, let me try this again. He says, I'm excited. That's the one. There right you there. go. Yeah, we're going to add go. that to the voice lines for the DLC <laughs> commentary pack games. That is for sure. Capcom <laughs> Cup 10, man. Right around the corner. We're kicking it off with Japan in our very first match. Happy Nanakuna New Year. Happy versus New Year. <laughs> Kazu Noko. Yeah, talking about uh, Kazu Noko's run. Obviously, both of these players undefeated 6-0 and oh all the way through. Kazu Noko is taking down players like Key. Someone who's kind of slipped under the radar, quote unquote, yep. as well as John Takauchi. However, Nari Kun's path here, one of his big notables was KB, aka Bamba Bamba. But here we go. It's going to be the very first game. Two out of three is what you're going to expect in the top 16. But once you win your first matchup, you're already into the top eight. And the yep. big uppercut to check the elbow drop from Kazunoko already on the anti air agenda. And I already love the use of costume number three here it's for so Nari Kun. Looking. It's so good looking. <laughs> and it's the Capcom Cup colors, by the way. Oh, yeah, you're right. All right, and it gets in there with a the Vagabond Edge, but check off of that run. Yes, if Kimberly cancels into the run, you should try to check that with lights, uh, your four-frame button. With that in mind, you see Kazunoko kind of playing, kind of cool too. Yeah, he's waiting for the big arrow push from Naughty Kun. The OD dive kick getting challenged immediately after from Naughty Kun because of the Ooh. angle overhead does connect. Try to bait out something. Yeah. With There's a big trade off. Kazunoko out of the corner, but still Ooh. the final fight combo back in. Yeah, that was a punish counter, so Kazunoko must have hit something on his landing just like that again. He keeps trying to cross up, but he keeps missing, unfortunately. There's the side switch from Naughty Kun. Goes in there, doesn't. Oh, but he has no meter for the parry attempt right there. Minus three after that step kick. But yeah, you are in so much trouble here. Gets the free jump in, however. Oh, that's going to be a tease. The minus damage not going to kill yet. Kazunoko is still in trouble with the burnout. The trade. <laughs> and the throw as well. Kazunoko still keeping his composure. Even after that trade, still managing to sneak in that forward advance before the throw. Striking first blood. And it's only the first round thus far. Three bars to two. Not even still could dish out a lot of damage to get that buff early. I don't know what that was. Ooh, it might have been maybe like an instant air top two, perhaps. <laughs> maybe. Trying to throw out a little sneaky move there. But unfortunately, right now, down in a little bit life here. He's got to figure out a way to get in there. Just bounces away and does see Kazunoko go for the jab. Gets in with the teleport. Here we go, corner pressure now, throw. Are you gonna go for throw loops here? No, the heavy kick for that hit out of the air. Oh, should be huge damage. Do you spend it here to cause the burnout and get the buff? I think you have to go for that. Yeah, mm. there he goes, he goes for it, he goes so, for it. Well, what's interesting about that is he went for the full combo that allowed Kazunoko to build a little bit more gate for himself. So mm. it's not gonna be the burnout just yet. Can he guarantee it though? Oh, that's gonna be an air reset, yeah. But the burnout here, nothing. I mean, if Kazunoko wanted to spend the meter right there, but he probably figures he would rather just save it for the next round anyway. So that was actually a great decision by Naughty Kun. I mean, he could have went for the level one and see how it went afterwards, but I think this buff is just too vital though. The speed buff, the power buff as well. It's so important. Yeah. But you do have the explosive start from Kazunoko. Is he going to start it off now? Not off of the lights, I don't think. Maybe the next big hit, he'll probably do it. At this point, though, if Naughty Kun gets pushed into the corner, it allows... Oh, that's so beautifully done yeah, with that punish counter. Oh, but he right missed there. the sequence. Naughty Kun found a way to open the gap in moment. Okay. He's just going to go for it right here. Get the damage while he can. And, I mean, why not? This is going to bring uh, Naughty Kun down to just a small chunk of life left here. Look how much energy Kazunoko still has. Oh, oh that's a big block. punish. Yeah, that might be close to death. Ooh. Not quite. And he's burned out. But all oh, the walk up. You're light so punch. Sick. He's so sick. <laughs> he knows exactly where to place some of these light normals fast enough and also just far enough to clip where it's just going to be like a hitbox oh, in your face. Got him again. The whip punish that. on the standing medium kick with the sweep. 
So this is a message to Nari Kun. He's got to be really careful. But of course, the scary thing about Kimberly is outside of her sweep, she has no moves longer than her standing medium kick. Now just trapped in the corner. I love that air to air. Whoa. And there's the shimmy. He's gonna be able to. Oh, go! I like that. Yeah. One. Burn out. <laughs> the burnout. Oh, not quite. But... He's off of this block. Oh, uh, and there was an attempt and a parry, perhaps yeah. from Nadiku. Uh -huh. Once you're trapped here, this could be a big problem. You could ship with a couple of spin knuckles if you wanted to. Kind of keep it tight. Honestly, I was surprised he didn't go for the di. I mean, if he level one there, I feel like that would have been fine. You know, so I would have just went for the di. But Kazunoko takes it anyway with a beautiful anti air. I think it's because you're building yourself some meter, like you know, getting a little bit extra. You're not getting it off of, like the blocks, but you know, he got it off of your uppercut towards the end of it, which builds right. up a decent amount of meter what? to do this. Exactly, level one now pushing to the corner. What is not a good He just jumps out of there! <laughs> Hold up forward on wake up. You know, if you suspect, they're gonna show. Oh, here we go again. Big damage. What's he gonna go for here? Goes for the can setup. Gets the throw. This should be able to get the juggle. And how does he set up after this? Does he go for another can setup? He does! OD uppercut get off of me. Kazunoko making the right lead this time. Yeah, and the beautiful thing is that Kami gets away. A lot of characters ODDP trades with the can. And Kazunoko's been so good about checking every run cancel. Oh, no cancel on that stand medium kick, and, but doesn't matter. Gets the combo anyway. I didn't know the character falls like that after that sequence. Did you see that? How she? It looks like they fall after like a, a, a light normal animation. That was kind of cool. I never seen that before. Or not enough, I guess. Oh, wow. big open pitch was able to reach. Yep, go for the drive rush right there. Damn. Damn. And actually goes for the level three. Builds up the the power up, and why not? Early in round number three, you want to get that advantage. I don't care what anyone says, the way she moves around the screen and gets that corner <laughs> carry. Kimberly is actually sick. This character is so terrified. Goes for the air reset. Oh my god. And then does nothing into the throw. Oh, tried to bait out. But Kazunoko nice wake up with his own jump forward and the EX side kick, but Nanikun had the EX Tatsu ready to go. 1-1. One, one. One. is so good, man. Ooh. Able to block in time, didn't quite get anything off of that drive rush. Nice dive kick late to blow up the anti-air. Ah, so now you see Kazunoko, he was kind of uh, conditioning Naruto to not press buttons after a certain sequence. Now he's been fishing for uh, the shimmy, essentially. Naruto is still holding back the block, he's just chilling. Up until this moment, forward throw. Yeah, just back throw out of there. Damn! Nice! Doesn't even let that snap kick get be able to land. Now, big life advantage. There's that walking, standing light punch. It's the timing of it all. Yeah. It's so deliberate. Kazunoko, just a slight hesitation on the stand jab to force Nautikum into maybe pressing the button. He didn't want to stand still for it. All right, here we go. Drive rush. Yep, bring him to the corner into the Vagabond. And here we go. Oh, yeah. That's a true combo. That's a true frame trap right there. Standing heavy punches in the EX run. Kazunoko's been trying to check those runs. That one won't work, and here we go. What's the setup here? Oh, he goes for the level three. Okay. Here you want a life left? I think that's great, right? It's not gonna necessarily kill, but Nautikun has a chance to build up even more meter for himself as well. Kazunoko, he does have a fighting chance <laughs> up until that point where he decided to let it rip. That is a patented Kazunoko play. You know what the honest. craziest thing is that Kazunoko's wake up ODDP in every other game has almost been flawless. But I think he's like one for four in this uh, in this match so perhaps, far. Perhaps, yeah. Oh, nice! Tried to bait something out right there, but I mean, she doesn't have no DDP, so she's not gonna wake up with anything. Ooh, tries to get out of the corner. This is the final final game, final round here. It is just two out of three. This is trouble for Nadeku. He's got to figure out a way to get out of here, but he's burned out. That's gonna be a side switch for Kazunoko, though. Oh, oh, the big interruption! And for the side kick, and he still quit Nautikun after the hooligan dive kick? Kazunoko, <laughs> you are actually crazy for that one. I think he could have gotten like any sort of sequence into a level three, but he still went for the hooligan yeah, dive kick. You... just side switch all of a sudden out of nowhere. And, Nasty uh, man. Obviously, Nautikun was just not thinking about that. He just was standing there and then just got caught and... Yeah, Nadikun is going to be sent to loser's bracket, and Kazunoko going to be moving forward on the winner side of the bracket. Yeah, I think a lot can be told with 
the way Kazunoko has been conditioned in Narukun multiple times on like different looks on offense too. Like he's been going so much for like the shimmies, he's been going so much for like the delayed standing jabs as well. But even more so, I think he's such a threat on wake up. Even if you have like setups like these, he's not afraid to let the OD uppercuts win. Mm -hmm. Like I think he does one right there, but uh, we didn't get the chance to see that one. But mm -hmm. this is a nice sequence here. He does just go for the throw afterwards. And again, that's what Kimberly does. The corner pressure is so strong. But yeah, right there, that side switch. On the check of the run cancel again. So Nari Kun tried to sneak in all those run cancels, but Kazunoko was, was ready for it almost every time. The only time he really got hit was when it was the true frame trap. Yes. But outside of that, Kazunoko had that every single time ready to go. And again, the only true frame traps that Kim has is standing heavy punch into EX run. That's right. And crouching heavy punch into regular run and EX run. Both of those work. Mm -hmm. But any other cancel is always interruptible. The only thing Kimberly can do is run slide to frame trap you. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's That's such a scary easy. thing in and of right. itself, right? You, I don't think uh, like Nautico went for that once. Yeah, but it's like minus 14 or something, minus 15 Listen, or if Kazunoko is willing to do wake up <laughs> uppercuts in the corner, <laughs> I think Nautico could at least show some uh, negative 14. That's true. Actually, you know, I mean, that's a good point, though. Early in the game, early in the rounds, mm -hmm. might as well go for that when they don't have the meter yet, you yes. know, to, to do a lot of damage. At least show you're willing to go for that frame yeah. trap. Yeah. yeah, it makes a lot of sense to do so right it could be a little bit risky but at the grand scheme of things when you're looking at the bigger picture it's like now they're expecting something a little bit wild there's like oh man you actually decided to frame trap me here huh maybe right. i should stop checking these maybe it could have been a different outcome if kazunoko decided to not check that last sequence right. right i mean this is this is one of those valuable lessons you know if you play a perfect game that doesn't mean you win with a perfect you're using your health there if they block the slide to give them information to give you advantage, you know, later on in the match. So, yes. again, sometimes life is just another resource. Sometimes you have to sacrifice maybe a little bit of it to give them some information, give yourself some information as well. Who says we don't need philosophy? That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> So it is going to be Kazunoko who moves on into top eight. Nautikun does have to face off, I feel like, maybe against be between Naomi and Yamaguchi, if I'm not mistaken. So he's going to be chilling for a very, very long time. Yeah. As we do a lot of these CPTs, we kind of tell the story <laughs> of if you end up being the first one up and you lose, you are going to be iced for a, a significant amount of time. But we'll see how that plays out. That's going to be a very interesting matchup between uh, Naomi and Yamaguchi either way I mean, to face <laughs> off against Nautikun. The funny thing is a lot of times you'll see their... Uh their LP changed drastically. Yes. <laughs> did anybody did anybody see how much LP Nanakun had prior? We'll see if he ends up uh, jumping Practicing, into rank. Yeah. I'd imagine he's hitting up some of the homies to get a couple of games yeah. in the custom room. But either way, I digress. Otani versus Inabashi should be coming up next here in our top 16 in a winner's side. And this is going to be a banger. Otani has been taking down some really, really significant names. I mean... Pretty much everybody's done the same here, right, in top 16. But Otani specifically, he's taking down Kudo, who's been making waves yeah. towards the end of Street Fighter V. And Brian F. said it the best. He's only from New York if he wins with that Chun. <laughs> but I got to say, like, all jokes aside, Kudo's been phenomenal with that Chun. Speaking of Chuns, Moke also on the victim list from uh, Otani's uh, victory run. I mean, Otani's first opponent, I guess, was Return of the Jedi. The name was Star Wars Six. But you know, <laughs> is that is that actually the sixth one? I actually don't remember. Yeah, well, episode six, gotcha, I should gotcha, say, gotcha. episode yes. six. There you go. We count that. <laughs> so this is an interesting one, right? Also, Itabashi Zangief. So we know him, we love him. One of the biggest uh, rivalries we had between him and uh, Nemo has been ongoing, yeah. and it's so fun to watch. But Zangief isn't going to be the character. I feel like his transition over to Morisa is very reminiscent of the way he transformed his Zangief into the Abigail play in Street Fighter V, right? He's playing the big body archetype to the T, and has found immense success. I if mean, you guys haven't tuned into Street Fighter League towards like the playoff, man, it was crazy. <laughs> but so, someone actually said that they felt like Marisa is... Just cause I mean, is not Kazunoko. Is is, uh, is, <laughs> is, is uh, Abigail in this game? You know, the Superman punch is plus. It's kind of like the little leaping attack. You know, mm. you've got the armor on a Stan Fierce, which is like Fair. the Gladius. You yeah. know, and stuff like that. So you know, there's very large similarities. They both just drain your health. <laughs> your health just disappears. You know, they both have a command grab if yeah. they need yeah, to. Yeah, they have so. above average uh, above average health as well. Yeah. So there is a lot of similarities between the, uh, the those. Characters. 
characters. They are the big body brawler for mm -hmm. sure. And uh, I mean, again, I mean, it's a shame we're not going to see the Zangief here. Just want to, you know, find the time to mention other names. Kichipa, of course, uh, losing to Oechan and Mago mm -hmm. uh, in the tournament. And, you know, with the solidarity on the Marizas as well. Shuto. Obviously, Shuto, who lost to Haitani and Kakeru. That is brutal, that man. Is hard. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> That's one of the things I wish we could have seen a little bit more, right? More of Kakeru, more of Shuto. Shuto has been on a big run for Street Fighter League, man. He has been one of the top point earners in that in that format, and it's been so phenomenal. He's been like in the anchor spot so many times for Saishun Console Kumamoto's team. It's been insane. Him and, and, is, and he's switching between modern and classic still. Most. So he's been playing. So it really does depend on the matchup. But as of late, he's been playing a lot of classic. I don't know who he mm, played okay, okay. or like how he played during his performance in the CPT. Uh, but I'd imagine it was classic. And speaking of, we're going to get that from Itabashi as well. But Otani, man, his Luke has been so crazy. I've been watching his YouTube footage for the last couple of like, months and weeks, really. Well, this is the a Luke is the character, right? I mean, obviously there have been changes, but. You remember in the very initial beta, people were like, Luke's not very strong. And now, you know, here we are at this point where Luke is really kind of the talk of the town, yeah. I feel like. I think really, you could say almost the opposite of Marisa. Everybody was like, this character busted. Right? Yeah. Very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, honestly, I, I really do feel like this game, having an ODVP is such a big deal. Okay. So... One of the biggest things that we saw Itabashi play out during like his his performance into top 16 was a lot of the drive rush forward uh, and, and go right into the gladiators. <laughs> this is huge. He just went for it and he's gonna get the kill off of the drive impact against someone that like his drive impacts to me as for example a uh, longer startup command grab. Like that's just something that you know you might be scared that your opponent can counter it, but you gotta go for it every once in a while in the corner. And that was just at the tip of the crouching medium punch. Back into the corner we go. Otani, what are you gonna do about this pressure? Dashing up again. Forward throw, can you throw one more time? No, it's driver forward instead, but it's still plus range. Look, guess. <laughs> This is death by a thousand throws over here. Oh, and keeps the corner. I love it, but he's almost burned himself out. And beautiful level three right there by Otani to slip right through. He's got to stay alive. He's going to get the burnout, but still, huge life deficit. Oh. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore on that life deficit. Oh, and my God. Is that it? Three That's sequences? More than enough. Three more sequences? Than enough. Boom. Wake up level three, one shimmy into... Uh, Neutral jump to catch yeah. the walk back medium punch. Itabashi tried to play the counter poke game at that moment. Otani again, the three sequence killer. <laughs> oh man, and again, Luke just has that strength, has that damage to be able to dish out like that. Mm -hmm. And, Could and, have me a third strike right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Luke is just one of those characters that when he's burned out, he's really not as... Like, Luke's burned themselves all out all the time, right? So I, I know. Mean, yeah. I see you. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly one of my favorite Luke's yeah. to watch. Uh -huh. That's true. Yeah. Very true. And look at this. Yeah. Off of the back of that round, Otani's coming out here looking great. A lot of drive rush into Gladius right there from Itabashi, and they haven't been finding their mark. Oh, here we go. All right. Oh. Oh, there it is. What a whip punch. The million dollar button right there. Crouching medium <laughs> punch. Hitting from three fourths of the screen, baby. I love that name. It's so uh, good. But I mean, he was also in the right place at the right time. Yeah. He was looking yeah. for the, the counter poke type of style that Itabashi wanted to play. Uh, he was primarily looking for a lot of these whiffs that Itabashi was throwing out there. Of course, that crouching medium punch is eventually, the, eventually going to come into play. Right. And so there you go. Going to tie it up one to one. Wait, was that one zero or one to one? It was one zero. One zero. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking of the first round that uh, that was that Itabashi won. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, did we go back to character select? Are we switching to Zangief here? I doubt it. I really do doubt it. I think it's going to be like a little refresher for Itabashi to kind of switch up. If you've, if you've ever seen him play in person at some of like the offline premieres, he goes through his phone to kind of like mm, reread some of yeah, his notes and whatnot. Okay, he does have okay. like character specifics and also player specific notes on there. So we'll, we'll see. Unless he was just changing the music on his, on his phone too. That could be a thing. <laughs> Try to jump into Discord a little bit, maybe talk to some of his friends. Maybe. Oh, but just going for the wake up DB. And Otani fighting himself out, but as a result, he's down. But again, man, how often does he find himself uh, punished for that yeah. tactic, right? The drive rush forward, Gladys has not paid off for the boss. Uh, four times! And again, yeah, that's the fourth time I've seen it not pay off, and the second time yeah. that has been hugely punished. Yeah, but to be fair, Itabashi got a lot of mileage on that exact tactic against. 
someone like Mizuha on his way over, to be honest. Mm, okay. Back throw now. Gonna drive it forward. No, you're chilling with some fireballs. We do like that. Itabachi has to slow call towards him or drive rush forward with a delayed Gladius this time. Yeah, a Actually, bit later. in the distance. Yeah, and I mean, Otani backing off a little bit because I think he wanted to build back some of that drive gauge as well. Tries to sneak in there, goes for the throw, but nice jump away by Itabashi and Otani now finding himself close to burnout. But what a reaction! And that's not modern, baby. That's classic. <laughs> that was classic. He is modern controls. Okay. So now Otani, match point already. Itabashi looking so strong in the first round and the start of the second round. And now it's been all Otani since then. Oh no, too and close. Been, man, I, I feel like a lot of the counters have been very linear for the side of Otani. Just jump, you know? Like when you see that drive push forward, he's found literally a jump in almost every time. Yeah, and then the perfect parry on the phalanx, and here we are in a bad situation. Just goes, gets caught by the shimmy, and that will do it. Otani, two O's, Itabashi Zangief. So Itabashi going down to the loser's side. Itabashi, I mean, he took out Mizuha, he took out Haitani, he took out Dompachi, uh, but now he's going to be sent to the loser's bracket here. Otani, of course, uh, you mentioned taking out Moke and Kudo, uh, but adding Itabashi Zangief to his list of names here. Yeah. That was, uh, I mean, there's a lot to really kind of uh, <laughs> digest, but at the same time, it's like, man, only Otani can, can get these kind of counters, I feel like, on someone like Itabashi Zangief. Itabashi didn't even have enough time to figure out a different type of strategy against him. He still relied on the drivers forward right. and still got clipped for it. Like, even if you decide to, like, not go for the Gladius, let's just think about that, right? Even if you see the green stuff come through, even if you jump in on Marisa, like, what can she do on time to react with, like, an anti-air? The only thing I can think of is maybe OD Dimacaris, I think it's called. Yeah, right? Dimacaris, so, yeah. yeah. Or even, like, crouching heavy punch, but, perhaps. I mean, the problem with the OD Dimacaris, though, is it, it moves her forward, so if you're too close, you just go Sure, under sure, people sure, sure. and so yeah um, or just drive rush and just keep going <laughs> just keep running yeah run forest run yeah i think that i think that's fine like you don't lose that much drive gauge i'd, right. much, I'd much rather lose a bar of drive gauge than lose like 25 percent. right exactly exactly but i mean the one time that and then he finally went for another draw drive rush and then Otani just had the level one super in his face. He was yeah. completely ready for it. Yeah. So I don't think there was anything he could have did at that point because I don't think he had the level three at, at that time. Because Itabashi was holding onto a lot of meter I mean, the entirety true. of that set. Also. I wonder if he, uh, if he, I, I would have to see what that what that situation was. Yeah. Unfortunately, you have, if, if there's a situation where you have to choose a reversal, it, ha it would have to be level three because yeah, Otani's yeah, done yeah. a great job of of highlighting the big weaknesses that Marisa has, especially in the corner. Right, she is highly susceptible to throws right no mm -hmm. matter what even if she has like a level one she has uh armor on that you could grab it level two a little bit of startup on that bad boy most of the time you're not gonna get caught with it um right. level three i feel like is the ultimate like equalizer it's her best wake up yeah, yeah it's her best uh you know dp move essentially mm -hmm. so but that's it right there for uh that match otani is going to be playing tomorrow itabashi will be playing a little bit later today but we are going to move on to tokido versus akira oh this is huge and remember Remember one of the things I will never forget this during the LCQ last year. Tokido, quote, no Tokido, no Capcom. 100%. Cup. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> we have both of those candidates, by the way, in our top 16, Daigo and Tokido. But it, it's a very valid point, right? It was on his stream. He said, no Tokido, no Capcom Cup. This man is Street Fighter, yeah. in my opinion. And so here he is right now trying to make it in here and being on the winner's side, obviously a great way to, uh, you know, uh, start this weekend here. Of course, you know, uh, shout outs to Phenom, who's been trying to promote that uh, propaganda, I will call it, uh, trying to convince everybody that Ken is not top five. But Tokido still believing that Ken is a top five character and uh, still sticking with that Ken. I think there was a, a, a photo a little bit earlier. On. I mean, I think a lot of the players that were invited over to FAV Cup are still kind of hanging out in Japan. Yeah. There's a photo of like, I forgot who took the photo, but he's like, I'm surrounded by Ken players, send help. And it was like Angry Bird, <laughs> Tokido, and then you see Fino. I think it was Big Bird who said that oh, photo. Yeah. If you're in trouble, Big Bird, blink twice. We got you, fam. Don't worry. Tokido versus Akira, what you could expect. So Akira, the speedster, he has found his footing in Street Fighter League uh, with Kami, right? His transition into Street Fighter 6 has been a phenomenal one. I think he's done a great job with Nagoya Ojibwe Star uh, with this character. And we've seen his progression. Him being in the winner's side 
side is pretty phenomenal. He, he took down Mago on the way mm -hmm. over, if I'm not mistaken. He's taken out a bunch of other names that I personally have not been following along right. with. But again, both of these cats, 6-0 and oh on their way over to top 16. Yeah, Tokido taking out Jackie. Uh, Yukichi Pugera is another one. But uh, let's see what Tokido has to say about this matchup. I'm glad it's more than two words. And he <laughs> says something that is pretty apparent. There are many strong players. That's true, Tokido. You are absolutely on the money, okay. man. All right. <laughs> Just acknowledging what the situation is. And, and he's again, one of them. He yeah. is. He's like, you know, many strong players. I am also. And again, I mean, such a fan favorite, right? Everybody's always wants to see Tokido do well. A lot of people want, I mean, again, top six at Evo. He was one of the, at that amazing top six that took place at Evo here uh, earlier <laughs> this year. No, last year. <laughs> We're in 2024 now. Uh, so I'm sure Crazy. a lot of people are going to want to see Tokido uh, move on here. But Akira, of course, Kami player through and through is going to be here trying to play spoiler. We already have one Kazunoko Kami player who's made it into the top eight on winner's side let's see if akira can duplicate that effort on the offhand there's only one ken player in the winner's side huh yeah just tokido very right now. interesting <laughs> now the interesting thing though is that obviously you know they they nerfed it so that it, you can't option select the the light punch into the 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 drive uh the drive rush cancel drive rush right cancel, yeah. because but, you're like tapping forward at right. the same time yes but the the problem is though i mean if you remember tokido was one of the first players to really utilize that stand light punch to lock down camis because cami extends a lot of hurt boxes early on at close ranges so we'll see if tokido does decides to take advantage Dude, of that. I don't care what anybody says on the internet. I love Ken's costume. <laughs> I don't give a damn what people say on the internet. This costume is sick because it's a throwback to the movie. Like, not, not oh. Super Mario movie, but the old, the old, old movie. I forgot the name of it, but I, I've seen it all over. Like, the, are you talking about the Street Fighter B or are you talking about the anime? No, no, don't worry. I'll, I'll oh, it I know what you're talking you know about. Exactly yeah, 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 yeah. I know the, the, the Hong Kong yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's so sick. It's actually so sick. All right, burned out uh, is Akira, so gonna have to deal with this Jinrai pressure. Oh no, just, wow, that was perfect distance to get that. And here we go, what's Tokido gonna spend here? Nothing off of that. The wake up jabs from I like Akira. I like that, no fear in his heart. So perhaps Tokido doing, uh, or just maybe he just mistimed the meeting, honestly. That was a counter hit too. That could have been a big conversion. Mm -hmm. Akira, I don't think he's able to get a crouching medium kick after that. Either that. But he's going to get that crouching medium kick in the drive rush. He has the corner position here. Throw loop time. Oh, word. That was a punish counter, by the way. He mistimed the medium. He just mistimed it. And so Tokido's going to spend this level three. Put uh, Akira right on the edge of a burnout here. And so this is going to be a great position for a, a Tokido, even though he doesn't have a quite life lead here. He wants to get this burnout, but you see, that's why Akira yeah. runs away, but... Tried to parry. Yeah. He just timed it. Tried the perfect carry that instead. Oh, and I was talking about the light punch, but Akira's the one that throws out the light punch, light kick into the level three. That's actually kind of sick from that far away. Oh, the decapitation, no breathing. Akira with the level three starting things off very strong. The first game in his advantage. Tokido. A couple of mishaps. He might be sinking with the starts down below. There's that standing light punch right there, but wow. What a time to do <laughs> right? that OD uppercut. <laughs> what a time for oh, the cannon spike. No DP from Tokido. I'm surprised. A lot of times, if you think you have a chance to block those jumps like that, you just go for the DP anyway. Man, he's had a lot of success catching these low forwards. Tokido just within range trying to... What kind of anti-air was that? <laughs> that was sick. That looked like a... Like, like CVS2 hitting you from so far away oh, with that man. Man, heavy kick. All right, well, Tokido here. Wow. Try to bait out a wake up. He's going to get this. Look, spends all that meter, and it's going to pay off. Gets the kill. And then, of course, you start out with the next round with all of your drive gauge back. And he's got the Kenny Omega haircut and everything. Yeah, just eating up that crouching medium. As a Kami player, it's your favorite thing to see is when you start that dive kick, you see that crouching medium kick. I mean, to be fair, Akira's been pretty aggressive with that low medium kick, so I don't blame Tokido trying to throw that normal out right. to counter. It's justified, but Akira, he's two steps ahead. Another sequence could be death. 
for Tokido. Oh, that could be the sequence wow. right here. He has Drive Gates to finish it out. And level one? No, he doesn't need it. it. He needs to charge it. Yes, sir. Charging up the uppercut. Akira with a perfect going into match point. Level three on both ends, by the way. Whoever starts off with the explosive level three, they might be the victim. Yeah, nice. Here we go. Is he going to plan to spend it here? Let's see. Nope, he just goes for the corner carry instead. Double dash setup right here. Catches with the low. Not a counter. Right. Yeah, so can't link off of it. Oh, uh, yeah, catching you, trying to up back or walk away. And look at this, almost to the corner here off of a nice double drill sequence. No anti-air from Tokido. Tokido, definitely. I always felt like one of his weaknesses is his anti-air. Wow! What a trade! That's got to be a level three. You have 100%. to spend it here. 100%. But that sets up Akira nicely. I think he, he's willing to take this. If it's come down to like one more sequence, Akira, very well made. Get that low forward into yeah. the kill sequence. Oh! And that could have been it. That was a counter hit as well. No anti-air that time from Akira. And he just gets hit by the jab. But it's not enough to kill. So Kido corners himself. Oh, boy. Watch out for Hail Mary drive impact. Oh, but they walked out. Oh, he Whoa, just went for, whoa, he could have whip punished that with the super. If he just whip punished that with Oh, sleep. he he wants that fireball. Maybe he's buffering to that level three. Oh, he he is. Going back. Oh, can I keep fighting? Just do it. No, this is it. This is deader than dead. Tokido with a false, a huge error in the corner, jumping out for nothing. Akira with the good sense to make the biggest anti-air into the top eight. The level three, the critical art to stuff out Takedo's jump back attempt. Amazing, amazing acknowledgement from Akira. No fear in his heart while he was burnt out, not fearing the chip damage. Amazing, amazing recognition and even better reactions. Akira 2-0, the speed star, sending Takedo to losers. And if you remember from a lot of those interviews from Phenom, uh, from Phenom uh, in Japan, a lot of the people listing their top five, they had Kami in that list. And you can see why Kazunoko and Akira here bringing the Kamis into the top eight tomorrow. They'll be on the opposite sides of the bracket. But if they could win their matches, it could be a Kami Kami winner's finals. Oh, my. But That's yeah. kind of wild. Yeah, that <laughs> was that crazy D the wake up. Uh, the, I'm not really landing ODDP right there. And then this hit. And he didn't even need to spend any of that meter. But yeah, the biggest mistake that Tokido made at the very end over here after this was he accidentally put himself into the corner trying to bait mm -hmm. out the wake up from uh, right here. So he jumps right there, put himself in the corner, and that oh, set man. this up. So it was right there after Tokido put him to a pixel. He jumped forward to try to bait out a wake up DP or something mm -hmm. like that. And as a result, he cornered himself and that's where he and got the fear to jump back and got anti-air. It's so wild because that's the exact range where Akira is looking for a fireball. But again, Ken players, a lot of them would go for like a run up uppercut to get maybe like chip damage. Right. right? If it's, they were it's burned much, out, right. It's yeah, much yeah. harder to, to react to something like that because you're expecting like maybe a normal, he's got really great normals <laughs> at that range. You're expecting a fireball, but a run up DP for the chip damage, that would have definitely killed Akira. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. But uh, Tokido still has a chance, obviously, from the loser side of the bracket. Uh, he'll be waiting for his opponent. So he'll be watching that matchup very carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, but again... Brother, yeah. does that set us up for a potential Daigo versus Tokido? Does it? Does it? Does I it? Think it I, does. I don't... Oh, I think God. it does. Oh, my God. So Daigo has to face off against Mizuha and losers. Oh, my God. <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> There's no way. And you know what? And Mizuha is the only one who can stop that, and he's another Kami oh player. Oh, my <laughs> God. But, dude, just thinking about that, only one could move on from those three contenders, Daigo, Mizuha, or Tokido. That's quite... Oh my God, dude, my mind is blown. And you know what? That matchup will be coming on later today, but of course we'll be continuing on the winner side after this break, but don't go anywhere just yet. Uh, look, we what? have, look, you've got to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, so we'll get it together. Yeah, we'll yeah. Get it together CPT eventually. is still not quite done yet. This is not the last one. We've got U.S. Canada East coming up here. And, of course, this weekend was supposed to be uh, Midwest, and that was postponed for a little bit later. So I believe Midwest was, is going to be the final one. This was supposed to be the right. final here. And, of course, you don't want to miss this one because this one, one, you want to play it, but you also want to watch this because either Knuckle Dew, Punk, or uh, uh, Idom <laughs> is going to qualify out of this so uh it is a a, a crazy jesus. one jesus we already got men rd in there so that's yes yes i'm, I'm uh, glad i'm very very thankful for that but 
Dude, those and Menno said he's not going to enter. He said he's not going to okay. enter, so he's going to uh, let the others battle it out. But again, Knuckle Doom, Men, and Kaba, of course, they just won the teams at FAV Cup. That's right. So, yeah, yeah. Knuckle Doom. Yeah, the Dominican Republic team. <laughs> <laughs> I did not hear that one. That's awesome. I, just, I was I was sitting on that for a while. Actually. Okay, okay, like, fair you know, enough. That's actually pretty sick. <laughs> Shout out to the Dominican Republic team. It was pretty wild. I like I it. Love that. I like it. But yes, this one is coming up, and so you do not want to miss your chance if you're playing. If you are in this region, again, the registration ends on Monday, so do not miss that uh, registration window. That's right. With a limited time for that registration, there's also limited time to check out Chipotle and their carne asada being back on the grill with the tender cuts of steak. You already know you love some steak with lime and cilantro and the signature spices all put together. You guys got to get your hands on some of the carne asada going down again. Chipotle is joined hand with joined hands with Capcom during the very first year of Street Fighter VI, and we've seen it all across the Battle Hub. If you guys don't remember, all of those burritos, <laughs> burrito man, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a great time, and all the memes that come out of it. But also, be sure to do yourself a favor. If you do happen to uh, actively visit Chipotle, you know, get it after, you know, a long day of work, or even during your lunch break, or even like right before a Street Fighter VI session, if you guys download the app now, you guys can hook yourselves up with a lot of the uh, the points that you would get and accumulate as you order more and more Chipotle. So again, be sure to check them out and uh, get in on some of the carne asada action as we get ready for the rest of our top 16. Again, this is so wild, <laughs> the way that these, these storylines have really like been playing uh, out been here playing to out, this weekend right. yeah exactly. tokido and daigo on a collision course potential oh you don't want to miss it like i said you do not want to miss it but once we come back the next match we're gonna have sasamo versus kawano after this so do not go anywhere more cpt japan action coming up after this break chipotle's carne sada is back it's our most tender cuts of steak grilled and seasoned with cumin oregano and coriander Finish with fresh lime and hand chopped cilantro. Carne asada. This is our best steak ever. Showtime, baby! Right now! Everyone's got a ticket for this cash on the car. He's getting a show. Right final now. game, final round! You couldn't find a better story. Get this in the ring! God, I'm low. God, my soul. All of my thoughts be dark like coal. Up to the party, y'all don't want smoke. Energize the body, raise up the yard right now. I'll take on all of you. Feet on the ground, look around. This corner pressure is wet. If you walk up, throw it. No more game. Time to get this. Ben RD taking it down defensively against the biggest rip.
you always see nothing, I just barely scratch the surface. Throw me in the rain, let me do my thing. Got the heavy deal, fall through the pain when I'm in the zone. It's I ain't never say much, but you see me up top. You see my numbers healthy, the pressure don't stop. Until I'm in the top, see the bottom seats watch. They all want see me flop, but I'm stepping on them, watch, let them watch. We're all ready to fight. This is my. Daigo the Beast Umehara. So good to be with you, brother. Okay, so there's so many different ways that we can go with this. But the first thing that I have to ask you about is, I feel like you are the best in fighting game history when it comes to uh, formulating strategies. So what goes into making a strategy for Daigo? Why are you so good with development strategies? Well, I think it's very difficult to do it. I think it's very difficult to do it. And um, at this point, you've uh, won Evos, Capcom Cup. You've done so much already. With you already being Daigo, you are at the top of the mountain. What still motivates you to keep doing all of this? Um, game was motivation. Okay, and you brought up playing against the younger players. Why do you help them get better, even though they're trying to beat you in tournament? えっと、やっぱりその同じプレイヤーだけが何年も何年も競い合ってても見てる方がちょっと疲れちゃうというか、あのまあプレイしてる側もそうですけど見てる方もまあマンネリしちゃうマンネリ化しちゃうと思うん
players. That's kind of where Kawano was for a little bit. He was considered one of the new generations, the young crew. And for the longest of time, they were not breaking through, but it was players like Kawano and Higuchi, by the way, yes. who did lose to Junior and Key earlier. But, uh, you know, these are two players who are, you know, really bringing up the, the younger players. Nauman is another one of them uh, that's doing that work as well. Mm -hmm. So, again, Kawano really, uh, with that Evo win under his belt, Huge. really kind of being like the true star, I feel like, of the next generation. And you can see here, mm -hmm. winner side with this Luke. So, uh, he's ready to do some more damage in Street Fighter 6 now. You know, Sasamo is actually taking up that mantle as well. He is part of the new generation that has exponentially grown into stardom, in my opinion, in the realm of Japan. You know, originally from Brazil, he had moved over there uh, for educational purposes, and he didn't have the best start, I feel like, towards... Uh, Street Fighter League Japan, but his DJ has been exponentially growing, and obviously we got the new man. These are sick, by the way. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be uh, Sasamo going up against Kawano. Get that little bit of change into the scene if we can. No anti airs just yet. Exactly. But uh, interestingly enough, though, I mean, you know, DJ is one of those characters. He's get, he continues to get stronger and stronger, and so as a result, a lot of players can start stealing tech from each other, you know? The, Truly, that's yeah. the beautiful thing, is that as a player gets better, like Udo, for example, Yamaguchi with the DJ, everybody else gets to steal all the crazy stuff he can do. Oh! Goes for the out. wake up, but does burn himself out, so yeah. this is a dangerous situation here, especially because, and he doesn't have the invincible level one, so there was nothing he could do about that situation, so that is one of the weaknesses that DJ has. Well, it's considered, I was going to say, the amount of life he had left, it was worth the risk. Up until that point, Kawano still being able to check Sasamo sequence after sequence in that corner. I don't know what it was from Sasamo that allowed him to earn, that made him think he was allowed to press the button during that sequence, but I mean, Kawano make it hurt. We saw from Otani that three sequence from Luke right there uh, earlier to, to to take it over Itabashi. Yeah, his level three, <laughs> a shimmy, and then a neutral jump. Yeah, so we know how much damage Luke could do. Oh! oh counter it! Ow! So that means, look, I'm... He's uh, living, he's living, but okay, it's right. damaging <laughs> a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, boy. Overhead might do it as well. It might barely do it. A little bit of a walk up. No, it's the jab into the drive rush, and it's so tricky, especially after that, right? Yeah. Sasamo not able to get Milano off of it. Switching up the stage a little bit. Sasamo, what are you going to do here, right? We haven't really seen the anti airs just yet, but that's totally fine. That wasn't even a punish counter, by the way. Oh, the way down. yeah, so he didn't even catch him in the landing frame there at all. Oh, that was a punish counter right there. Perfect parry on the Sandblaster. Now backing off a little bit, and he has not been able to jump in on Kawano much at all. Oh, and there's that crouch medium punch on the check, even on DJ's drive rush. You have to do it. You have to be. That's one of the, the big, the big criminal things that DJ can be doing in neutral. And that's the second well, time speed limit. Kawano has checked it, and this time Jeez. goes for the shimmy. Uh, you know, uh, the back dash right there instead of the tech. But both of them still punishable by that crouching medium punch. So Kawano at match point in speed running fashion here. Seems that way right now. The green stuff coming out from Sasamo, but Kawano a little bit too close to even try to challenge him. We had that charge for years, by the way. Sasamo yeah. does get one anti air. Good tech, good tech, and look at that. Catches the drive parry attempt and now gets a burnout on Kawano as a result. Lost. Ooh. He is so ready for that. <gasps> nope, he couldn't do anything about that. He had to have gone into the level one. Level two, perhaps. Oh, yeah. What are you going to do about this sequence? You got to hold that. But in order Ooh, to. What was that? In order to do it, Sasamo had to burn himself out. And Sasamo, however, going to win with that trade. No air slashes and attack. You know, Sasamo has been doing a pretty decent job of hiding the, a lot of the charging earlier, but that's been on defense. On offense, he hasn't really brought much to the table, in my opinion. There's been a lot of drive rushes that have been stuffed out. Kawano, uh, level three, it's coming out. So, building up a lot of damage for himself, but that drive gauge is going to be so important for Kawano to enforce even more pressure in this corner position. And Sasamo, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to bust out? It's oh, the Oh, he just wakes up with the lights. And here we go, and he's just going to go right into the level three as well. Do as much damage as possible. Also, put uh, get some of that drive gauge back and put Kawano down a little bit here. 
I didn't realize he punches you with his ring. He doesn't have gloves on in his outfit. <laughs> that hurts, yo. Jeez. That's no not... back roundhouse anti-airs yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Back roundhouse into the, into the just cool faint. Into the Sobat faint. You can even Sobat. Yeah, 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 Sobat, yeah. Sobat faint. Oh, boy. And More he than should enough. be able to kill off More than this. Enough. Even Kawano. without the level one. So, uh, Sasamo obviously doing some good job right there towards the end. Uh, taking that round number two and, and, and extending it. Like I said, the first three rounds on Ko yeah. Kawano were so quick. It's just so well informed on Kawano's behalf, right? You're looking at some of the things that DJ gets away with, even in ranked, right? One of the biggest yeah. uh, criminal offenses that he gets in, in most of his games is the drive rush forward, right? But one time, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the big things that we've seen DJs do is drive rush forward into Just Cool to bait out mm -hmm. some of these... Mm -hmm. uh, these interrupters, right? The crouching medium punch can get stuffed out or at least countered if you do like a just cool input to right. cancel your forward momentum. Right? Even potentially that drive parry that we just saw that if you drive rush into just cool, it might not hit the drive parry, but at least you get them to lose a bunch of drive gauge sure, sure, uh, sure, by sure. whiffing that and then blocking the just cool low. And then you end up losing even more drive gauge that mm -hmm. way. But yeah, Kawano with those perfect parries. I mean, look, <laughs> you often see those uh, clips of Fudo and Kuano, you know, teaching the, the, you know, during the breaks, teaching you guys how to play Street Fighter uh, during the Street Fighter leagues. Uh, Kuano obviously knows what he's talking about here. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be our uh, top eight. The winner's side, Kazunoko versus Otani. Akira versus Kuano. And again, I mean, obviously these are all names of very, very strong players, but you know everybody's got, you know, looking for where's the Moke, where's Kakeru, where's Bonchan, where's Daigo, where's Tokido, you know, where's Sako, where's, uh, you know, all these players who aren't here. It is going to be Kazunoko, Otani, Akira, and Kawano. They'll be playing tomorrow at the start of Top 8, but again, every one of these players so strong. This region is is and has always been the deadliest and just the j biggest uh, gathering of talent in Street Truly. Fighter history. Truly. You know, it's not too far off, though, I feel like, with the other regions going for, like, with, oh, with yeah. what we've seen thus far in the realm well, of Street Fighter Six for sure. But, man, this is easily the highest amount, right? 900, yeah. 925 players, but only these handful are making it into the winner's side of top eight, slowly getting that golden ticket to Capcom Cup 10. But sw switching it over to the loser side, let's take a look at who we have next. KB, a.k.a. Bon Baban, going up against Key. Now... Key is somebody who has slipped under the radar for me personally, but man, has he taken down a plethora of names. KB's <laughs> phenomenal. He is the JP player, but there's a lot of players that I didn't recognize of uh, who he's taken down. Um, however, Key, he's taken down in his 6 1 run, Urio. He's taken down Nemo. He's taken down Higuchi all the way over. <laughs> yeah, the only player that he lost to is Urio. And keep in mind, in case you guys aren't familiar with Key, he is an E Honda player. Oh, he lost to Kazunoko, actually, right? Oh, yeah, if yeah, I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Who did I say? I, Urio, Urio. Oh, Urio, yeah, 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 you're right. Kazunoko. He lost to Kazunoko. But uh, he's an E Honda player. Now, E Honda is an interesting one because he's one of those characters that started off just like terrorizing everybody. And really, this character kind kind of uh, fell by the wayside, but here he is still representing the sumo from Japan, and he's going to be going up against uh, KB. Now, you know, uh, I, I had heard from, uh, I think it was Nassim who said that, you know, Honda versus Nassim JP. Paul, yeah. yeah, Honda versus JP is a terrible match for Honda, mm -hmm. according to him. So we'll see how well uh, Key can handle this. But again, Bamaban, bon, a.k.a. KB over here with that JP ready to show Show us uh, how this matchup goes. Mm -hmm. And this is not a matchup that you really get to see at high level play. Like we've seen Nassim perform over at his offline premiere. Uh, but this is again a matchup I feel like is very, very tough for, for a lot of the Honda players, just even on paper when you're thinking about it. Like you can't just rely on the Honda headbutts to kind of close the gap. But I think overall, like Honda can possibly enforce a lot of pressure on offense, right? Because of the command grab that he has in his arsenal, the amount of damage he has also from hands that allow him to like links even further combos and even further damage. Um, it really depends on how he utilizes the praise the sun buff up uh, <laughs> essentially and, and see where we can get with that but um we'll see man there's, there's so many different factors that can really really go in key's favor and that walk speed also is very i feel like it, it's kind of 
it's kind of deceptive. I don't yeah. know if it's like above average. Uh, I don't think uh, it's above average, but it looks very deceptive. Right? I mean, it's a giant sumo wrestler. You've got to think you feel like he'd be slow, but this guy is pretty fast. He's like, gliding acro across the screen. Most and his of the drive time. rush is, is pretty good as well. The fact that he just kind of keeps going. <gasps> like Marisa doesn't have a stopping, but what a whiff punish right there. So this Look is looking the great for Key right now. Goes for the empty low, but then gets caught into the street bog, back to full screen. So here's the problem. Oh, he does get in. Okay. Yeah. That's what he's saying, because a lot of... He's going to be able to take the round. 100%. Yes. Yeah, a lot of getting in on JP does require a lot of forward walking, right? You have to know when to forward walk because uh, if you're always going for the Hail Mary in, it's going to be easy to predict you with the tree glass and the spikes. But oh, he went for too many jabs. Went for too many jabs. But obviously, if Honda walks forward, he loses his headbutt charge, and that's brutal for him. Uh oh, Let's level see what the two. That's like against him the best level Doesn't two. Doesn't go game. for the drive parry. He just tries to manually block it and fails right there. Didn't take up too much damage, right? Although he is in the corner, he's in a between a rock and a hard place kind of scenario. But it's not the end just yet. He can still make this comeback happen with level three almost in sight. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh he no just way. goes for it. He faked it. Oh, but the air reset is going to cost him right there. He was hoping to still have him on the ground, but the air reset just makes it so he can punish that target combo. Damn. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Nice drive rush there from Hana, but he got caught low. So this is going to be huge damage and back to the full screen. Has to wait for the departure. So goes for the jumps and keep charging. Oh, what was that? Oh, just a raw drive rush into overhead. Is he going to go for any sort of cheeky resets here? No, he's just going to go for the damage. Here we go, all the way across the screen. Sets up the departure instead. Also, instead of going for the extension for the damage, I like that. Oh, again. Overhead again. Twice. The curse. The and curse of trying to like play a charge character and maintain yeah. your charge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I have not been hit by more drive rush overheads than when I was like playing Guile online. Cause you're just like, I can down back, it's fine. Oh my God, Ooh. fierce again. Right, this is what, this is key for key right here. Getting to this corner position now. Again, this is loser side. So if you lose this one, you are out of the tournament. Like I said, this is our only uh, JP main here. Oh, same with our only Honda main. Yeah. But obviously, Japan, you know, a lot of the players there think JV is number one in the game. And honestly, oh man, that's so deceptive as well. KV, finessing him with some of the movement, thinking he's allowed to get that throw. And he did a lot of damage oh, off of that. Oh, there's that disjointed uh, crouching medium punch. But they're just blowing up whatever it was that Key was trying to hit there. Trying to win punish with that standing heavy punch again. Oh, just stood up at the last second! Because I think he was worried about the dry overhead. rush overhead again. Match point now for KB. Showing off all the different approaches from the drive rush, but it's more importantly impressive that he's kept Key out of like out of range one and also preventing himself from getting caught in the corner with some of these punishes. That's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. And this, oh, that's yeah, heavy. Here we go. Drive rush. Yeah, goes into the corner here. He's gonna get some decent damage off of this, but he's never really had a chance to set up the 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 the, the hand slap charge up. And one of the reasons for that is because you can get spiked from a clear across the screen. Truly, yo. Not that like, not like he really needs it at this point. Right. Most of his conversions have been very Ooh. high damage. And he's always been just out of range for that neutral jump heavy punch to connect. So it's always whiffed and put him in a little bit of an awkward position. <laughs> oh, oh, what an anti-air, but didn't get the juggle off of that. A little bit of an awkward angle, no? You saw the yeah. four tears come out from Honda mid-air. The stop sign, if you will. Amnesia, but he should be able to block there. Overhead! Gets caught by the overhead ghost! The overhead boogeyman coming in there into the level three. Look at this comeback! This round, that's gonna be a critical arc! That's gonna take it for KB! And Key is out of the tournament here, falling victim to KB's JP. That's rough. And again, like I said, a lot of people in Japan considering JP the strongest character in the game, but KB, Bombabon, and Jackie are the only JP players here, and Jackie considers JP more of a secondary character Yeah. Uh, to the Kimberly. Again, the, the player that, of course, everybody's talking about, Kakiru, actually went down to Jackie mm -hmm. and to Mizuha, uh, who we're going to see in just a little bit. Yeah, I will say uh, with... 
the way that Q is playing, as soon as he got some of these big openings, I think he did a fantastic job of outpacing uh, KB from like closer on. He got a lot of these big whiff punishes that led to fat damage and also uh, corner positioning, which is a huge advantage. But I think just his defense was a little bit lackluster, right? There was a lot of moments where KB got overheads, including mm -hmm. the ghost right there, but a lot of the drive rush forward into the overhead is what clipped him in the first yeah. game. I, I, I mean, clearly the problem right there was that his reaction to the drive rushes was not stellar. He sure. The drive rush from JB is a pretty fast drive rush, but he was coming from pretty far away, but Key's defensive strategy in this situation was to try to block. Yes. Try to block the low or the overhead. He was playing into KB's mix-up instead of just trying to headbutt. He never threw out an armored headbutt. Not even headbutt. OD headbutt. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh -huh. that's, that's he never something tried that to do that. He didn't try to butt slam, try to surprise butt slam out of there, or mm. even just hit out a crouching strong or something like yeah, that. Yeah, when you see something like a drive rush forward, an OD uh, butt slam, seems like a pretty appropriate right like, uh, response right is a really mm -hmm. appropriate countermeasure too because it goes so far and hits on the way up as well so it's like why not even try to do that i don't know he was maintaining his charge during both times mm -hmm. where the drive rush forward came out into the overhead so i'm not too sure what could have gone yeah, into his mind sometimes i mean honestly sometimes when the nerves are getting to you and you're playing in a big match like this you don't realize that you're kind of playing into your opponent's game right they just start drive rushing and running at you and shout outs to kb as well he was like you know what he's not stopping this i'm, I'm gonna, gonna keep, keep doing it, it. that's <laughs> yeah. yeah if it ain't broke don't fix it that's always gonna be like the key no pun intended that's always gonna mm -hmm. be like the key to victory in my opinion but kb is the one who moves on his reward he gets to face off against a dj player sasamo so they're gonna mm -hmm. see uh, see each other duke it out a little bit further on, but this might just be <laughs> one of one of the many marquee matchups, right? We had somebody who's been running a marathon throughout the entirety of the CBT event. It is Daigo who's coming up next against Mizuha. Daigo's current record. 11 and 1. <laughs> so I have to talk about this. So all of the top 16 players here got here via the winner side of top 32. In other words, every single player that we've seen in this top 16 has come from the winner side of top 32. So whoever lost in that top 32 won their next matchup, except Kudo, who lost to Daigo and Daigo got sent to loser's bracket in the first round by Hibiki's by Lily. Hibiki's Lily. And let me tell you, Daigo, after losing to Hibiki, beat Octo, Mars, Saburo, Kazushi Bomber, Ganaken, Hal, Kudapop, Nemosu, Nemosu, Junichi Jr., Suji, Owaichan, and Kudo. He had to fight so Jesus, many 11, people. 11 bodies <laughs> on the way over to the loser side. Mizuha, a nice, humble 6-1 right now but to you know to his credit he's taking down van b who's doing a phenomenal job that's a name that i actually haven't heard of up until this weekend uh he managed to he managed to lose uh, itabashi on the way over but he's taking down kakeru yeah and i just realized hibiki calls himself hibiki the beast right so did hibiki the beast beat daigo the beast man there's a lot of beasts out there <laughs> that's, that's japan well me. you know what mizuha is a beast himself so let's actually see what he has to say about this upcoming match against daigo umahara and he says it's going to be a tough match but i'll do my best that sounds exactly like a street fighter league japan <laughs> pre-game interview <laughs> Word for word, bar for bar. I'm not even joking. It's going to be a tough match, but I'll do my best. Sometimes he'll add in like a player name. Yeah. Like, I'm facing uh -huh. off against somebody. It'll be a tough match, but I'll do my best. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> St. Cola would approve that too. He's like, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like Mizuha. Huh? But it's again, him. whoever wins this goes and fights Tokido. And so there is still the possibility <laughs> of a Daigo Tokido match in the next oh, round, boy. which we will see today. But again, Tokido had the spoiler played against him by Akira's Kami. And so mm. can Daigo's Ken overcome Mizuha's Kami? Ooh, Both of true, these Ken yeah. players trying to get past these Kamis here. So it's going to take Daigo taking out Kami to do what Tokido failed to do to set up the Ken versus Ken Mir. Mm. And is Daigo using Costume 3 too? With a blue color, by the way. Yo, I here like we it. go. Actually, a really good look on him. <laughs> it, look, it looks really nice. I'm just saying. It's a nice shape. Got mm. dark blue. I don't even know what actual color that is, but it's like a dark blue, right? Yeah, but uh, like a moss, maybe, I guess. Uh, but look at this. A side switch by Mizuha. Good start for Daigo, but immediately turn around and oh, baits no. that out. That's going to hurt. That's a good sequence. Look at the damage on yeah, that. Yeah, and then, oh, he missed it. It wasn't meaty enough. 
And there was no counter hit, so that wasn't gonna be a combo. All right, just goes for that, but yeah, nice counter poke. And look at this, just walks right under. Not scared of the dive kick at all. And now Mizaha just jumps out of there. Too so late. smart. Yeah, drive forward with the jab in anticipation of the counter hit, or at least the maybe counter like poke. A counter poke, exactly, from Mizuha. Right, gotta watch out for those fireballs though. That spin. Oh God! What in the world? Just barely win the race. Is he gonna be able to kill? Is, yeah, that's gonna kill right there. That's something that Tokido didn't get to do against Akira. Yeah. Right? When well, we got the grounded uh, Jinrai kick that yeah. pops over the air like that. I think he was hoping the heavy kick was just gonna kill him. Remember, he was a pixel away. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd have to. I'd, I'd have to watch that replay again. Oh, that's, that's pretty high up. up. Yeah, that's actually punishable. Oh, goes for the throw. It wasn't a punish counter throw, so not terrible for Mizuha. Oh, but he caught the normal. Did you see the animation <laughs> that kept? There was an attempt to, to, to bait out the throw from Daigo. Oh, oh it's your side again. switch. Yeah, here we go. Big damage off of this. Into the DP, and look at the damage here. Mizuha just needs one more hit. Tries to go for the shimmy. The, wow, he blocked the jab, and then just came out with a standing light kick. Did he get hit by that jab, or did he just... Lock it. So. Okay. Yeah. So then minus, obviously, in that situation there. Damn, that's a lot of fierce. <laughs> <laughs> Standing heavy putt from Ken, man. So good. People know how I feel about that move. Right, here we go. Back throw. Trying to put Daigo a little bit into the corner. Gotta watch out. Mizuha has that level three. So he can just go right through any fireball. Ooh. That could have been a huge punish opportunity for Daigo, but it's so difficult to even track the oh. distance of that dive kick. That's a great counter conversion. Hit. And it's the Fierce! No! What is he doing? He wasn't, he to he to wasn't expecting to get hit. I think he was just trying to go for a block sequence right there. Again, look at these drive rushes from Daigo! Fearless drive rush is gonna go oh, into nice. the level three. Not gonna be enough to kill, but it's gonna be so close. So what's the mix-up for Daigo after this? You wait. You wait from this distance? You absolutely wait. You had it for, oh, we got the crunch and kick. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's two things that could have happened, right? Mizuha could have went for like a level three, or he could have probably been able to parry, right? Yeah, he would have been able to drive parry that, but Daigo was willing to whisk, risk it. He 100%. just figured Mizuha wasn't ready for it, and maybe the reaction of trying to counter drive impact would have got him killed. That's so, true. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a pretty safe choice there, unless Mizuha was thinking about it, but he just was not thinking about drive impact at all. I don't think a lot of us were. Oh, that's, that's too, too high, high up again. Too high up. Jab start off the punish counter. Jab up twice. The perfect carry back nice. throw. No, yep, he's not gonna go to the switch. back throw. I like that side switch a yeah. lot more. Mm -hmm. Building some very good meter for yourself. Oh, he Ooh. makes it through. Daigo has been pretty. Uh, oh god, he is zero for three now on his wake up DP, uh, ODDPs. Kazunoko, is that you? <laughs> oh, what? what? How did he get to the other side? Did Daigo? I didn't see a micro walk. But it happened, and I don't think Daigo was ready for it. He got hit on the other side. Oh. Big low medium kick open air. Daigo, the enhanced toxic dash up two times over the ODDP. Mizuha <laughs> catches the back dash no actually from Daigo. No DP from Daigo, just a jump. Probably scared of the dive kick. Gets out of there. Cross up light kick. Whoa. Mizuha has not been scared to counter poke. Okay, yeah. Probably a little too high up to be plus. That drive rush light punch is what Daigo's really been going for a lot of. And we've seen that a lot in the meta, actually. There's been so many players that have kind of adjusted themselves to that drive rush opener, or at least drive rush in neutral, and have got the counter poke down. Oh, that, that is was a fast roundhouse. To be. That was definitely supposed to be a DP, and as a result, Daigo is just going to eat the jump in. And that's going to do it right there for Mizuha here in game number two. We're tied one to one. Again, Mizuha Kami trying to play spoiler wow, to the Ken Mirror potential of Daigo and Tokido. Kami versus Kenny Omega. It's one to one right now. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so oh, cool. No. That, was, that had to be a missed input. Yeah. Magic, right? That was yeah. a very early jump round house on the side of Mizuha. Mm -hmm. I was like, thank you, I'll take that. Got the counter hit. Wasn't a punish counter. So that's sending heavy punch. Oh, no cross cut DB. Surprise. Oh, nice switch. A lot of, uh, a lot of activity on Wake from Mizuha. Daigo just walked right into Hooligan Dive. Oh, finally gets the ODDB. Mm -hmm. Mizuha's like, you wouldn't do it again. I punished it three times. Oh, oh no, this is, yeah, that's probably going to be death right 100% going to be Doesn't death. Doesn't even need to spend any of that super meter. Daigo, match point. 
two bars under his name. He's hot trailing behind in terms of the meter management. Yeah, There's a big low forward there. Builds up the level two for himself, but also this damage and corner positioning is everything for Mizuha. Can he contain the beast? Oh, you see Daigo right there trying to perfect parry these counter pokes for Mizuha, but he switched from medium kick to heavy kick, changing the timing that Daigo needs to uh, perfect parry. Oh man, he caught him walking backwards. That wasn't even a combo towards the end of that. that oh no, kick. Oh, that's huge. Level three? No, he's oh, gonna save it. it. He wants to save it for the next round. And I don't see why not. Look at, oh. Just yeah. go next. You know, that's totally fine. I think at that risk, <laughs> you know, it get paid off. It could have been a huge mental break. Right, but here we go. Final game, final round. Two level threes intact, forward throw now. What do you do? Do you drive it forward? You sure do, do it again. Nice break from Izuha. He had the right read. Level threes can be the big opener from Izuha as well. Drill? Yeah, and from I don't that think... distance, that's fine. That's totally yeah. fine. Okay. Simple. Oh, here we go. Gonna go into the level three. Wow, because that's gonna be a lot of scaling right there. Thanks for that crouch medium kick uh, that was in there. But of course, it's gonna be closer to burnout and he wants to build some of his base back. Oh, can he parry in time? He can't, he can't. That's he the level three. It has to run its full animation in order right. for you to take that type of action. Okay, so both of them spending their level three. That is minus for Kami uh, in that situation. Wow, oh. he didn't get the juggle, he didn't get the juggle. Oh, that was a punish. <gasps> Another one paid off. Mizuha with the OD uppercut. But he burned himself out. Oh, and speaking he made of it which. Again. He made it out again. And Mizuha. Kami playing spoiler against the Kens all day over here. And it is done for Daigo. Daigo the Beast after a crazy first round loss and then rattling a lot off. 11 matches in a row falls to Mizuha and he will be out of the tournament and Mizuha will go on to fight another Ken in Tokido. Man, what could really be told about the way Daigo was performing? Right? His offense was, I, I will say like in the very beginning, I think it was, it was pretty phenomenal. There was a lot of looks that he was trying to give towards Mizuha to steal turns over and over again with a lot of the Jin rides and a lot of the drive rushes. But I think on defense ultimately is what spelled his doom. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 oh man, oh, I, I had a point and I forgot what I was going to say here because I'm it's thinking, late. I'm thinking a thousand miles a minute over here. So apologies, but no, that's what I want to talk about. Mizu has read on Daigo's ODDP. He read so many of those. Again, I think Daigo was one for six, including that Hail Mary one right there. But literally, Mizuha had that on lock. And you see right there, to close the round out with that, he just read Daigo's desire to try to throw out a get off me the whole entire time. Yeah. And uh, that, I mean, when you think about that, like five missed ODDPs, that is a lot of damage you took in a three set uh match like this and so daigo's wake up i mean i'm surprised he kept going for it. i'm surprised daigo just didn't be like you know what this isn't working <laughs> let's chill but, but if it does work he's a genius right i'm just course, saying man it's the course. will the will to keep dp yeah it's just the brand new book coming out in 2024 it's a brand new year it's a brand new daigo but all jokes aside man if it hit i, I feel like it would have been yeah. disastrous for mizuha and you can't let someone train you like that because you know you fail all the time but again that was it right there. Daigo knew if it hit, you know, it, it's good. But if it doesn't, then that's game over. And yeah, that's that's truly it. That's exactly it. Like people mm -hmm. in the chat and, and myself included, when I kind of see these things, I'm thinking to myself, like, why would you ever do that? But you have to <laughs> fail first to succeed. Man. That's, just the, that's just the game, right? You have to uh, make sure you're not baited into like playing defense a different way or like or at least right. sitting there and blocking. Like, sure, I get that. But like if it hits you are possibly taking down Mizuha's brain with you. Like right. his mental like, will be in shambles. It's like, why would you do that yeah. again? Like uh -huh. if you can relate, like if you played any other ranked match and a, and a Ken player was doing that to you and then the last one hit because you're like thinking to yourself, he's not going to do it again. You would be in shambles. Yeah, but that's the problem, right? That's the problem. That's it's, the root of the problem. But the problem <laughs> is, it's Ken. Of course they're going to DP. We've all seen the meme from Street Fighter 4. What oh, you going to do man. when you're DP with? Show sure you can. Ken. Show sure sure you can. Ken. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I really, I really <laughs> do. Man, what a time. Oh, oh man. man. Well, we are going to be taking a little bit of a break, but before we do... Uh, 
that, of course, we got to talk about the things that have been uh, transpiring in the realm of Street Fighter VI outside of the CPT, right? We've seen the Buckler's Boot Camp being shown off a couple of times over. If you guys want to check it out, scan that QR code down on the bottom right for a really, really cool addition to the realm of Street Fighter VI utility in regards to checking out all of the players, all of your friends, all of the clubs, and all the other features that revolve around the Battle Hub and the online system of CFN. You can check out so much of the data that goes into the Buckler's Bootcamp to help level yourself up or even find people along your skill level to mm. improve off of, right? With the Buckler's Bootcamp, it is a free game-linked mobile-friendly website with all the features that I just uh, mentioned for Street Fighter VI, right? You can check out the player data, all, the, all of your friends and what they're doing and where they're at in Battle Hubs, clubs. You can check out the ranking information and more at the ease of your fingertips. You can also find other information on, like, the characters. If you're into the lore, I know James is a big lore nerd as well oh, as yeah. myself. We love the story. We love the characters behind it. All the in-game events as well that happened. We had the big Chipotle promotion that had happened with all of the, the mm -hmm. big costume additions as well. You can find that over in Buckler's Bootcamp. So again, be sure to check it out and make the most of your Street Fighter journey. Yeah, and if you want to see some of the best Street Fighter action out there, I mean, Street Fighter League has been uh, really delivering uh, this this year so far. Street Fighter Six has been excited. I've been watching, uh, you know, all the U.S., all the EU ones, you and, you and Steve, of course killing it on the American commentary. Thank Shout you, out to Jammers you. and F Word. They have been doing a great job uh, on the Street Fighter League EU. I've been having a blast watching all of this stuff. I know US, they, you guys have just reached the playoffs. So we that's just right. finished the oh Temple Oh my game. God. We have just you, reached the playoffs. Yeah, so it's going to be so sick. That's going to be happening very, I mean, starting this next Wednesday, the playoffs are going to happen. So we'll see who's going to be representing at Capcom Cup for Team US. Or, or I should say the Team World, I guess. Do you guys count That's, I world? guess so. I mean, yeah. to, to uh -huh. a certain degree, right? Yeah. But we also have Street Fighter League EU <sighs> happening, right? They just concluded their eighth week this yeah. morning, if I'm not mistaken. They're going to be uh, hopping into week nine by next week. They're getting closer to that playoff spot. But speaking of playoffs, SFL Japan has already reached that point in time. The grand final's happening over <laughs> on the 13th of January. Myself and St. Cola will be delivering all the action live by the way, for more info on that, be sure to check out the QR code. This is a pay-per-view event. However, it does not mean we will not showcase it, right? It's going to be live on the 13th of January, but the actual viewing for the public, if you don't want to get that pay-per-view, we totally understand. For the public, it's going to be the following week uh, afterwards. Okay, okay. And, you know, if you want to watch and play along at home, you know, with your physical toys here, Storm Collectibles is actually got your back over here. You can check out that they have brought all these classic and iconic characters Damn. to life. You know, and with a nice high quality, and we've got like, look at this whole cast over here. We even got Fei Long chilling here in the front over here right now, and I see uh, alternate costumes for Cammy, the Bison uh, one as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him. I see him. They have there. violent can. So this is the Ultra Street Fighter Two like lineup <laughs> as well. I was wondering. I'm like, huh? Fei Long from Ultra Street Fighter Two, but you do see uh, yeah. violent can on the top right. That's sick. By yeah. The way. Storm Collectibles. I mean, they've been doing Street Fighter figures for a long, long amount of time. So uh, definitely check out all the figures on their website. You can see the official website. The QR code is right there. But if you want to pick up some of these figures again high quality figures at a very very affordable prices so check these out when you have the chance look at that grin look at that grin on luke's face if you guys <laughs> want one of those that, that's where you need to go stormcode.com.hk or scan that qr code ladies and gentlemen again we've been we've been uh slowly slowly but surely getting to our top eight here for cpt japan and there's been a lot of excitement in the room buzzing around even in the production side too in the back everybody's going nuts <laughs> uh we're gonna have to take a little bit of a break so again get some refreshments for yourselves it's gonna be a long long night of street fighter you don't want to miss any of it i guarantee you it's only gonna be better from here on out. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we'll have more of the Capcom Pro Tour Japan qualifier after this. You're really making all of this by hand. Oh, yeah. The avocados are hand mashed, the chips are hand tossed, and everything is made fresh. You make it fresh every day? Yes, every day. The Chipotle way is we make it fresh every day. Sounds delicious. Get it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we begin then? Do you need to take a rest? Do we enjoy this? I'm game if you are. Another mission awaits. Do you plan to fight at all? Alright, I'm ready. Your footwork's sloppy. This is the kind. Behold, this body of work. You are lucky. Get ready. I'll show you strong. Allow your guy to guide you. What is it? The power of your guy. I'll show you the power of my cup. Break my defense. Got you in my sights. Ha, smart choice. Bring it. コマ投げって言ったら不動産じゃないですか。そうだね、コマ投げでね、七年間過ごしましたからね。コマ投げ。コマ投げを打つ打たない五十パーだとするじゃん。で、そうすると、投げの当たるダメージと垂直ジャンプ食らうダメージって、絶対垂直ジャンプの方が単価が高いんですよ。うん、だから、コマ投げの方が弱いんですよ。だから、コマ投げを五十パーで打ってくるんだったら、絶対垂直で勝てる。そのダメージレースは。確かに。だから、コマ投げ自体はそこまで、俺は恐れる必要はないっていうのが、まず結構大事な考え方なんですよね。はい。で垂直してもらっていいですか。垂直するとなんか対空とかでやられちゃうんでバックステップすると実はあのリスクもちょっと少ない買ったりもするで殴れるみたいなでこれ殴るとあのパニッシュカウンターするんですごい痛いコンボも狙えますよっていう、うん、で今回はねバックジャンプもキャラによっては結構あり今ので大系統はいけるかもしれないですけどでんんあのパニッシュカウンターするんでバックジャンプで逃げながらもリスク合わせれるキャラクターとかはそれやるとあのいいと思います大事なのはリスクを合わすこと、はい、駒投げキャラにそのずっとこうしゃがんでて待ってて駒投げ食らってる駒投げうざいよいやそりゃそうですよっていう感じなんで、うんね、それはちゃんとリスクを与える選択肢を取るといいと思います We are here with a fighting game god, one of Japan's all time finest, Mago. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mago. Okay, so I want to make sure, I want to see if you know. Do you know that a lot of players from around the world look at you as the most entertaining and funny player from Japan? <laughs> yeah, he's chilling. <laughs> いやログ TV の方が全然上だよ。<笑> Thanks, I appreciate that, bro. I know one thing that I am not is one of the fighting game gods. So I wonder, what do you think about that term? The fact that people call you guys fighting game gods. Some of you guys use Sako,、um, Daigo, Tokido.、Um, what do you think about being called a fighting game god? いやあ、ちょっと恥ずかしいかな。<笑> okay, all right. So two million dollars on the line at Capcom Cup. Mago, for one, what do you think about there being two million dollars on the line? And if you win a million dollars, what will you buy? Yeah, but when I was a child, I didn't think about it. I was so excited. 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 I
ふうに思ってるのとその賞金を得ることができたら何買うだろうなあんまり考えてない多分生活は変わらない Alright and now Mark I gotta ask you about Street Fighter 6 versus Street Fighter 5 They play very differently What do you think about Street Fighter 6 right now in comparison to Street Fighter 5? ストリートファイター5はすごいディフェンシブなゲームだったんだけどストリートファイター6になってその同じような戦い方をするとちょっと勝てないだから少しちょっとオフェンシブにいかなきゃいけないっていうところでなんか相手を動かさなきゃいけないっていうのがすごく面白いなって思ってますマゴ it's been a pleasure talking to you bro you are cool as heck and you are the funniest not raw tv 100% you're the funniest guy in the fc probably at least in the conversation definitely in japan we have been here with a fighting game god and absolute icon japan's very own mago welcome back everybody to cpt action where we and everybody here have been bringing you a flood of street fighter content <laughs> we have been, and we are continuing here with cpt japan and it, to, these matches have been crazy we've obviously lost some favorites in daigo already but you know what we still have some more matches i'm excited to watch what do we have coming up next well we have the rest of the losers to conclude out with right we still have the wave of sharks to go through jackie right you know i never actually knew how to say this name actually it was Jassy, Jackie, you know ja what I mean? Like, I mean, I think the Katakana even says like Jashi or Jashi? something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. But uh, I, I'm assuming it's Jackie, but it is a player that I have followed closely because uh, considered the strong, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, Kimberly mm -hmm. in Japan. Yeah. So that is going to be. Uh, it's gonna be a Kim versus Mago Sanya. Mago's actually <laughs> been, you know, he's 2D God for a reason. He's been one of the pillars of the community for so, so long. One of the fighting game gods. This one's a little bit of a conundrum, right? I think he's just found his footing with Jerry the last couple of months, okay, I believe. Okay. But he's also had like a couple of moments on his stream where he would play with Kami. But as it stands right now, when we were watching some of his matches on stream over at Capcom Fighters Japan, he'd been rocking out with Jerry the whole way through. Okay. All right. And yeah, I mean that's a great character for him to pick. I mean, look at look at his look at his uh, jersey color there, even matching with the purple and the School white. Fish, right. Yes, so sir. Team Gilgan. There you go. So he's got that there. So, but again, two characters here. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Jury is one of those characters that you know when it started out, everybody was talking about Jury. Like clearly, one of the strongest characters in the game. Strong, strong, and easily in the top five contention. I think, right. You know. And, and and since then, I feel like she's kind of maybe kind of fell a little bit as other characters and it's not that jury got worse or, or exposed it's just that the characters we got, got developed we got better at dj we got better at luke we got better at jp mm -hmm. we got better at cammy you know all these other characters got stronger and stronger and uh it's great to see i mean obviously mago here there's also uh, other capcom cup i think uma qualified has he qualified for uh Blitz? capcom cup i'd I have to check, so. out, yeah. check out the, check out the list again but there's a lot of strong juries out there and i'm excited to see what jury can bring to the table here with this character mm -hmm. and it's actually really cool to tie, to highlight both of these players as well not just with where they're at in the top 16 but looking at their accolades against the other players you know joshi took down kakeru 2 to 1 <laughs> wow actually he's the one who eliminated Kaku. yeah and i've always said that i mean i i i never felt like like jp doesn't bother me as much because i'm a kim player because mm -hmm. i always feel like kimberly and jp is actually a pretty even matchup i don't know if that's what jackie or jashi actually used against kakeru because he does have a jp as well but i can't imagine you would go for the jp mirror match against kakeru right but you know i don't know that i actually didn't get to see what that matchup was like because they didn't showcase it right right so if anybody out there knows, just let us know. I would uh, love to see the CFN on that. I yeah. would love to see the CFN record. I know a lot of the folks that have been highlighting a lot of the Japanese players on Twitter. Please feel free to tag us both. We'd love to know whether or not he actually utilized yeah. Kim in that JP matchup against Kakeru. On the other hand, though, Mago-san, he has been on a tirade over <laughs> in Street Fighter League Japan, actually. He's been getting a lot of points for himself towards the very, very end with that jury play. He took down Bonchan. Yeah. St. Cola's favorite to win it all today, uh, or at least this weekend. Took down Kichipamu as yeah. well in a very close mm. two to one. Yeah, so uh, again, and, and you know, uh, for Jackie as well, also took out Nishiken earlier That's as right, well. That's right, yes. Uh, Blanca player, obviously. and I Used mean, the Blanca Chan outfit in his stream. <laughs> I mean, Actually, it's not, matches this I mean, didn't they say, I mean, they even said on their blog that they tried to make sure that Blanca Chan would not be banned this time. Like, we wouldn't oh. buy the, and, buy, ban the outfit like we did in 5, yeah. right? So, That's good. I love yeah. that they're doing it justice because I think that was 
the funniest outfit for him. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In terms yeah, of like uh-huh, what, uh-huh. what he was doing in the lore, I'm like, dude, this is, this is appropriate. But anyways. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting matchup here because, uh, honestly, uh, the low fireball, obviously, the, the, the fireball that Juri has really can cause uh, Kim a lot of problems because she doesn't have good ways to get over it. <laughs> Like, you would think forward heavy kick would be really good, but that thing stays on the ground for 10 years, so. Okay. Yeah, but here we go. Yep, that's a good meaty overhead right there, but there's the check. And yeah, you have to be careful nowadays. People are starting to get wise of the multiple lights with the perfect parries, speaking of. And, you know, Kimberly, nice wa- cross. Kimberly wants to put pressure on Jury in the corner with the can, because even if Jury wakes up with the ODDP, Kim gets a combo off of that because she'll land on the cannon. Kim actually recovers mm-hmm. in time to, to, to keep a combo going. So far, I like the defense from Mago not taking any damage in that corner whatsoever. A little bit of damage to the drive game, but he's totally fine. Oh. Finds that escape, and now that fourth throw could have been the end of round one. Oh. Just catching with the elbow. That fierce <laughs> was malicious. What and was going to be behind? But it wasn't meaty. Mago somehow got hit out of the yeah, air, which yeah. is crazy. Oh, yeah, that's safe, but minus. What? Oh, here we go, here we go. Unfortunately, it burned out, but he's gonna go into the level that's three. so smooth, man. That is actually oh. the best opportunity to use it, in my opinion. What a way to set yourself up, yo, Jashi. I'm gonna stick it with Jackie, actually. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. Okay, okay, we're do okay. That. You've been saying Jackie, I've been saying like three different pronunciations. <laughs> I'm sticking with Jackie. My apologies. All right. Now, charged up here. <laughs> As I like to bitterly say, that means Kimmy gets a speed buff and normal damage now. Normal so. damage. That's <laughs> <laughs> so all the Jamie plays. Man. Yep, exactly. Oh, oh, but it wasn't a punish counter on that throw. Yes, oh, God, that big the confirm. <laughs> That's the second secret you see Mago get that big confirm off of the low forward. Now it's Feng Shui fun time. Okay, so he just goes for the safe jump setup there. Cross wow, cut again. Man, it's so deep. Beautiful cross cut. Now, that does mean that Jackie gets out of the corner. Yep, that's going to be a knockdown when chained into. And again, these players have all been so ready to interrupt any cancel into runs. And again, she cannot cancel into anything to fake it. She can't go into the teleport. She can't go with a Vagabond Edge or anything. And as soon as you see her cancel, you got that ODDB there. Immediately going for the charge. He dashed up forward, drive rushed after. Mago hitting that level one was everything. Punish counter against the sweet forward throw now. Gets to dash up, do it again yeah. for plus positioning. The drive rush trying to beat something out yeah, against Jackie. It. There he gets. Interrupting, gets the hit. Not going to be quite set up for the kill. Didn't have a way to convert, but this one will. And there you go. The problem with Kimberly, when she gets put into the corner, it is so difficult for her to break out of that situation. Yeah. Stubby buttons in particular, not just the fact that she doesn't have the ODDP. And, I mean, I like the I like the stubbiness of her normals if it comes to like a counter poke game. Right? We yeah. saw the anticipation of the drive rush, except Mago was two steps ahead. He did a drive rush forward and in very early standing mm-hmm, medium kick mm-hmm. is what caught him, right? So it was a great idea coming in from Jackie, but Mago, again, two steps ahead. And it's the switch up to the <laughs> JP. There's the other half. Yep. And, you know, that's one of the beautiful things about having a drive rush with multiple hit moves oh. is the amount of active frames. That's why Jamie's dr- drive rush and the heavy punch is so frightening as well because it's just active frames for days. So that standing medium kick from Jury is a really strong drive rush button. Ooh, good parries, but just gonna get tossed now. Still in time to get the parry. Mm-hmm. Mago trying to sneak a couple of things in before his time to block back goes everything now. No, but still Jackie oh, just gets himself out of the corner off of a normal jump. Yeah, and it was a punish counter, so yeah, he could not block in time. Really surprised by that. Wow! wow. I didn't know which way DP. I say he was just hugging the corner. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yep. You don't have to guess that way. Man, the low forward catching the drive rush right up the right up the gate. Wow, raw level two. And yes. Oh, and the parry jumps out, but he tried to go for a throw, but Jackie was just a little too far. So here we go. Gonna get some decent damage. Actually sets up the departure and then gets the juggle off of the spike afterwards. The stalactite. I do enjoy that option from Jackie to go for the setup instead of trying to just like get as much damage as he mm-hmm. can off of the combo. That was really a really nice man played. Yeah. Sacrificing current damage for future damage and it worked out. And here we go. Yeah, that's what a conversion, so dude. Far. 
It's such Ooh. a wild hurtbox on that, or hitbox on that thing as well. That cross medium punches everything for that extension and to jump low, but no, he caught Molo crouching. Yeah. Jackie looking strong here. If he takes it, he's going to tie it up one to one on this character chain. Yeah, you got to worry about the, the spike triggering out, and now you got to worry about this level two. Oh, what look, defense. Yeah. He even managed to take the throw in there. Oh, too far away for the whip punish on that shimmy. And so here we go, Mago now with a huge chance, but just gets thrown on Wake Up! No way, that hit! <laughs> just do it! Mago, this is gonna be big damage here thanks to the critical art. This last kick doesn't do too much damage, but it's gonna set him up. Oh my god, that could have been everything for Jackie to get that air to That's air for kill. kill! That's a punish counter! Mago stays in match point territory. Jackie right there trying to perfect parry that jump in and Mago instead of empty jumping getting the throw but what a great start for Jackie here. Oh, it's the dive kick missed. It was too close so it just went right over his head. And unfortunately too late to actually get a punish from Jackie. He did attempt to cross the medium punch but I don't know if it's because of the recovery of the lift cross heavy punch or not. But I like the aggression now from Jackie, uh -huh. the perfect parry. Eventually we're gonna come out. Mago's defense has been stellar. Oh, right back at you. And interesting, he's gonna go into the level two, so it's gonna be a lot of scale, but yeah, it sets up the side switch. Yes, you can do it again. Oh, Look at not the damage not the to burn out. And yeah, that's why Mago's just he's taking so the hits because he's so scared of getting burned out. And he just goes into the stream bug, and I don't know what Mago tried to go for, but he just gets hit by it. I think it was movement. I think he tried to jump out. Yeah, light punch. The only thing I could think about. In the stream bog, in the light stream bog is a frame trap sequence, basically. So if you try to hit any butler, oh, he missed it. He missed the combo. Oh, what, what an interruption. Yeah. An amazing check from Jackie does have the departure. Even more pressure. That trade could have been everything for Jackie. Yeah, I think he could have got something more out of that. I that feel like it. Yeah. I feel like it. Oh, God. Maybe that. the distance is too far, perhaps. Oh, no. What right. happened to that drive rush? Like, the, the drive rush accidentally messed up uh, Mago's timing on his button after the dash or something. Oh, a lot of wasteful uh, ODs coming out from, from Jackie. At least oh. that's just Not too bad, though. Not too bad. Still able to, to get the rest of it. Now looking at Matt Point himself. Yeah, that, that down forward heavy punch. Look at that in such close range. That would have been a huge punish if Mago managed to block it. What about the Boogeyman again? Nice. There's that counter poke with that light into the three box. Catching the drive rush at the start of it again is Mago. Got a mileage off of this low medium kid. That was a perfect hair jump. I love that. Uh oh, that was a throw. This is going to be huge damage. He built up the level three, but he drops the combo. Uh, I don't know about all that. That could have been a sequence into level three. That could have been a lot more drive gauge for you, a lot of damage for you uh, as well. But it's one totally fine. hit into level three would be able to kill at this point. So Ooh. you have to be so careful if you're Mago at this point. This is loser side. Oh, what a perfect berry. And he's good. What? Nothing. Nothing after that standing heavy punch. Oh, he turned himself out. Oh, it's time for level two. Okay, yeah, perfect parry. Parry through those. The oh. defense is there. Mago does get a trade off as well. No! It's all under pressure. He tried to anti-air with an uppercut, but it wasn't the cross cut that he was so successful with. Instead, it's just the normal one towards the other oh. way. It's Mago mistiming that uppercut, unfortunately. But it's better for Jackie. Two to one. Another body another legend under his name yeah kakeru nishiken the only person he lost to was tokido uh in the bracket earlier on the winner side again like i said everybody was on the winner side here of the top 32 so he tried the kimberly at first and you know nice valiant effort over here but like i said a little bit of a tricky matchup even though mago really didn't abuse the, the fuhajin fireball mm -hmm. much at all he was just able to just punish all of the runs you see right there every time Jackie went into a rush. Uh, so he said, you know what? I'm going to go the exact opposite direction. What an interesting pair of characters to use. Mm -hmm. You have the ultimate rush down character and, you know, I mean. The ultimate character. Yeah. I was about to <laughs> Afterwards. Say, I'll I say it for you, yeah, I was about to say, you know what? I can't call him not a rush down character. But again, that He's a right zoner. there, He's what happened? Zoner, asterisk, <laughs> is what it is. That's, oh, that's so unfortunate too. 
he's the he's the Street Fighter Five Dalsam kind of zoner, basically. Ah right? man, yeah. I'm not even gonna get into the logistics <laughs> of that. I feel like it's too much of uh, too much brain power at this uh, <sighs> this stage of the game for me. But it's Jackie's gonna be moving on his prize while he has to face off against Itabashi Zangief, Ooh. either Kim or JP versus the Marisa or the Zangief, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. we'll see that play out. But instead, it's gonna be Nauman. Oh my God! <laughs> Nauman versus Yamaguchi, Ken versus DJ. Woo. Yeah, and again, Nauman, uh, part of he was an Evo Japan winner. Uh, I think it was, soccer, yeah. yeah, Evo Japan in Street Fighter Five at uh, you know at 2020, which was just right before the pandemic hit. So it was mm-hmm. pretty much like the last major, major offline major that we had. And since then, he's been maintaining that. But, you know, he has been uh, using the Ken over here. Yamaguchi, as I mentioned, uh, second place to Fudo. He defeated a lot of people in that World Warrior tournament right. there uh, to get to that second place. But it was him versus Fudo in the end. Fudo coming through. So, you know, Yamaguchi, he was one win away from qualifying in the Capcom Cup. You know this guy is hungry right now. So mm. he definitely wants to get his chance here and continue continue on in the loser side of the bracket. Yeah, and I feel like these two actively avoid each other in Street Fighter League Japan. Really? Like, I, I feel like this is a matchup that one or the other don't want to face off against each other. I'd have to look at the stats uh, again on the website. They have a fully like detailed spreadsheet of who's played off against who, who's won over the other team, etc. But this is a matchup for sure that I feel like is even in regards to the individuals at hand, right? In terms of the character selection, listen, man, that could be up for debate on, a debate on anybody, but in terms of the skill level of both of these players, it's even. Yeah, and Nauman, of course, uh, was able to take out Nemo a little bit earlier. He was only sent to loser's bracket by Sasamo before that, but he took out Kabe, took out Nau- Nauruo, and of course, uh, Yamaguchi, took out uh, Fumiti. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Fumiti mm. uh, lost to Kawano. Uh, lost to, I'm going to say Kishidi, I think is, is, is Oh, he beat, name. he beat Kishidi. Yeah, yeah, he beat Kishidi. Yeah, AKA yeah, yeah. Squeak. Yeah, I hope Google I Translate know. is doing it right. Yeah, man, Google I, Translate I turned it, it into but... Squeak, and I don't know what that means. He's so, squeaking yeah. by uh, the bracket, that's for sure. Because that <laughs> name has actually been like a repeat offender, I feel like, towards some of these yeah, players, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys mm-hmm. had face off against the same guy. And it's yeah, like, it was yo, the man, last person a Bomba Bomb beat before he he got into the top six. 16 over here so yeah so uh playing very very strong over there but Mm -hmm. uh yeah they're going up against each other here and i believe uh nauman has something to say about this match I'll do as much as I can. Listen, I feel like that's, you know what? It's not even just like the Japanese players who can be like as humble as they can as possible. Like that's, this is actually a statement versus any DJ. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll do as much as I can. When I'm facing off against a DJ, when I'm facing off against a Ken or a Luke, this is also my statement. I'll do yeah. as much as I can, man. Like, come on, no expectations here. Like, I'll do as much as I can is, is a fair statement. Uh, absolutely. Uh, again, DJ, one of those characters, you know, for the longest of time, what everybody would say, Ken, Luke, JP, Ken, Luke, JP, Ken, Ken Luke, JP. Luke, JP. And then at one point in time, people were like, can we finally start talking about DJ? Because the when Fudo won with DJ, th- th- like I said, grand finals was DJ versus DJ. And I think there was like two other DJs that qualified yeah. like in that same day or something. And so yeah. a lot of people are saying, we need to start talking about this character right but up there. It's so difficult else. too because only a handful of really talented players can escalate this character to that positioning of the top five discussion right 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 and i think chad has actually been on the money with that they're like you know what you know dj he can be a part of the conversation but it's really only a select handful that are doing it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he definitely is a very strong character but of course you know he doesn't have the crouching medium kick drive rush he doesn't have the level one invincibility so he has some things that are missing but let's just just cool is I mean, and then this link right there is so insane. Crouching heavy punch, punish counter, standing heavy punch, low jab into whatever you want. He's very susceptible to the drive mechanics because of the single hits that he has. Yeah, like, he doesn't have like yeah, big, yeah, yeah. necessarily big conversions off of these like single hits or whatever from like distance, and he also doesn't have big conversions off of lows, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he does get a damn good amount of mileage off of dry Ooh, rushes and just hang on. hang on. He's got a level two. So one more hit now from Nauman. Ooh, take nothing. This out, but there's that. So the one low that he does get damage off of is that just cool low right there. Yes. Especially on punish counter. He gets a crouch medium punch into launch into all sorts of damage. 
Oh, bad yeah. mistake, man. In English. <laughs> he wasn't expecting it to hit as a punish counter, so yeah, it was the, the reel was much longer than he expected. He's gonna go right in. Weekend pleasure right here. And let's get as much damage as possible. Oh man, with the rings on him too. Jesus, this guy is sending Ken to the hospital. He doesn't have the money. <laughs> he can't get that. Oh, up and just right back at him. Here we go, Ken. Like, you know what? You can hit me with your level three. I'll catch you with mine, too. Pretty much dead even in terms of the life bar. Yeah, just about, I think. Oh, Back throw is no, everything for Yamaguchi. Out of the rage in time. I'm going to bait out of something from now on. Oh, That's so bought. No what that. what a dragon. back dash! Back dash, and yeah, OD Tatsu. That was a sick frame kill, too. The standing medium punch to bait out anything from Yamaguchi. There was actually a counter hit, if you saw it. Towards that throw from Naoman, Yamaguchi might have pressed a button thinking the meaty wasn't going to be possible. Ooh, that is huge. Driver forward into the crouching short as a way to start things off in anticipation of maybe like a counter poke. Speaking of, crouching medium, but so compact and actually quick enough at six frames. Catching Yamaguchi off guard. Yeah, so Naoman with a huge life lead here. But again, DJ could dish out so much damage so quickly, but just gonna get caught by that. And yeah, we're gonna go right into the level one over here. Level two, excuse me. Oh, level two, you're right. I just pretended it was me that said it. So I got you <laughs> yes, sir! The perfect, and that was well placed. There's things that DJ cannot do for something like that, right? Not enough life to get the driver attack. Can't level one to go through it right with invincibility because there is none. Mm -hmm. He could have parried it for sure, but that's difficult. All right, well, here we go. Oh, oh, he got the punish counter, but he didn't believe. A nice little run side switch. But again, there's that counter, that punish counter with the crouching heavy punch that just leads to so much damage for DJ. Oh, no, he went too far. Nice check. Oh, oh he, he was saw that a mile away. And that's, I think that's the second time Nauman tried to go for something like that. The first time was just blatantly interrupted in the <laughs> right. corner. The yeah. second time, he gets fully blown up. For it. Yeah. Every it's time. only if you drive him back at the very last second against Dragon Lash can Ken recover and actually reverse DI. Yeah. But as long as it's anywhere before that, yeah, Ken is done, though. Smoked. Oh. Damn, I love that knockdown. That is Ending Walker's favorite moment, the lonely being <laughs> from DJ. Oh, he's going to get a confirm off of this. He throws himself out here. He's, you know, he's just going to go for this damage here. One hit in the level three will be able to take it. That's why he's going for the throw, because he knows that Nauman is just scared and is blocking. Oh, my God, punish counter on the run stop. Or sorry, the run switch. Not going to go for the level three just yet. Uh, forward throw. Do it again. Damn. Oh, that's going to be... No, that's, that's not, not going to be, be the, the whole thing. juggle. But he's still gonna get decent damage off of that. Look at this. Jesus! Oh, fakes the throw. It goes to DP. It's not enough to kill. Wow! He still got the DP out in time against the knee. His shot. low medium kick recovered. Oh His low my medium God. kick recovered, and he still got the uppercut. Dude. Against, the, against the knee shot, by right, the way. Which comes down faster. And honestly, had he not done the knee shot, he would have went over 10. And so that would have been a cross. It would have needed a, an autocorrect EP. Dragon Lash for the side switch. Uppercut for the damage. Dashing up. Yamaguchi now finding himself in the corner. The Sobot actually clips the startup with a fireball from Nauman. He has to back off here. But no, he goes for the run kick again. Oh, counter hits. Not punish counter, though. Nice interruption. There we go. Yeah, as long as you're charged. If you see that green, you just go for that. But burned out now. No drive cancel on that. There, we were talking about that back heavy kick into the uh, oh, again. So bad. The start of the dragon last. Oh, that is huge. that is a punish mm. counter. Oh. oh, he's going for the fancy stuff right here. Missed it, and he's no. gonna get punished. Oh, but no, we didn't get punished thoroughly. Yamaguchi could actually get himself into another game if he does so with the throw, and it's enough damage. Yamaguchi. Barely out of death's gra uh, grasp, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, especially after that ridiculous comeback from Nauman in that round number two. Yamaguchi looked like he had that round all wrapped up. But nicely, Yamaguchi here takes it to game number three. And I love that startup with the drive versus low short too. It's great in anticipation for some of the counter pokes, but also it's a low in case they try to walk back. Right? Oh, That's what? huge. See, that way, he just dodged that button and was able to land uh, that. It's a little funky to do it early. 
Oh, perfect carry! And now, obviously, Chen gets the side switch. Still a decent amount of damage off of that. Yeah. Interesting that he did choose to go for that OD Tatsu uh, after the side switch, too. Oh, Damn. this is gonna hurt. Shifujin right! Yeah, the Nalman special. The Fluge Nature! That's the TCC special. <laughs> oh, throw. no! Oh, he can do it! But he doesn't have damage, he doesn't have enough life, excuse me! Yeah. Yamaguchi, the bustle memory failed. Yeah, I mean, you see that, you're like, ha-ha! Oh, I'm a genius! <laughs> I'm a genius. Oh, oh, no! no. <laughs> exactly. It could have been level two, though, right? Yeah, I mean, if he had reacted with that, for sure. Or even a drive parry, right? No, because he was in the middle of a normal, right? He canceled the normal. I thought that was uh, after he recovered. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't remember now. We'll probably see it on the replay, but you know what? Yamaguchi's hoping to have a good result off of that replay. He's got to win two rounds in a row here. Man, that cost him everything, too. So much carry. And the side switch on top of that. What a throw. Yeah, even now he's just, he hasn't been able to swing, and then he just finds one button. And look at this, look at this. He does not go for any of the supers. He go, oh, oh no! He missed the cross cut. What was that? He missed the cross cut and came out as a fireball. That's, I'm not gonna lie, that sucks. <laughs> that that, actually that sucks. is unfortunate, and now Yamaguchi has a chance to take it to the final game, final round. Oh, he's you could chip the heck out of him. Oh, he baited that. Level one is dead. Yamaguchi tied it all up. Oh, the big composure. Ooh, that 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 failed cross cut right there. Is that gonna cost it Nauman is. everything? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. No recovery for Nauman, huh? You, 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 it, that's oh, here we go. Side Ooh. switch. Nauman said, is trying to show. Look, I have the composure. There's the cross cut that time. You know what? He's not gonna mess it up this time. With chance of that, but yeah, again, if you have an OD, you can punish the Jinrai. You don't have to you don't have to face the repercussions of any of the follow-ups and yeah. they don't recover in time. Yep. Guaranteed. But now, yeah, burnout. Damn, he I was totally had a level lied. One. He had a level one. There was no way for him to counter that because DJ's level one has no invulnerability. Nauman with the composure. You saw it. He missed the cross cut. He got it the second time. And as soon as he did it, he was like, no, I am good. I am not going to lose. Nauman moves on over Yamaguchi. And that is huge, by the way. Yamaguchi has been so, so Overperforming, I feel like, in regards <laughs> to the rest of Japan with that DJ. He's been phenomenal for these last couple of weeks, but here it is in the qualifier spot. Nauman takes him down. Yeah. Again. It was him who was shook. Yeah. Yamaguchi, second place of that World Warrior, one match away from qualifying the Capcom Cup. Didn't make it there, and again, going to fall short. Not quite at second place this time, but again, pretty rough way to go down. But you know what? He still... Damn. Got here out of 925 players, so yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, Easily man. has made uh, made himself a superstar in, oh, yeah. in the realm of Street Fighter, so with gross. Street Fighter Five as well as uh, Street Fighter Six. But man, he's he's definitely made a lot of fans along the way. He's been so oh, so good yeah. with his character. That right was actually there. rough, man. Yo, replay operator, I see you with the <laughs> slow mo. I see you, fam. right? <laughs> pretty Nicely good. Done. We're evolving. Uh, love it, love it. But there you go. There you have it. That's the end of round one on the loser side of the bracket. Unfortunately, we must say goodbye to Key, Daigo, Daigo Mago, and, Mago. and oh. Yamaguchi. They will all be going out, and we have had some bur barn burners here. Look at this. It's 2 1, 2 1, 2 1. Only KB going up against Key. That was 2 0 here on the loser side. But that sets up round two, where we have Sasamo going up against KB, aka Mamaban. Tokido going up against Mizuha. Jesus. So he's got another Kami to try to go up against. Itabashi going up against Jackie. And Nari kun against Nauman. I'm so glad we at least have one more game, one more <laughs> setup, one more match, I should say, before we get into this break, because it has been nonstop, I feel yeah. like. In terms of the skill level, it's been absolutely insane. 
But Sasamo versus KB, that's going to be what we're expecting. Sasamo, another DJ player, has been sticking to this character. He's had a lot of success and a lot of growth, I feel like, with this character. KB, him going into JP was a phenomenal choice. By yeah. The way. He has been so, <laughs> so good with this character. Yeah, and again, just a character that has been terrorizing people throughout the world here. I mean, honestly, you know, people have said JP is a character that we, Street Fighter players who haven't, you know, gone to a lot of different games here, have not experienced a character like this before. Nope. And he is so unique, and I feel like people have been talking about this character since the game has dropped. A lot of people consider him the strongest character, but again, it seems like people are starting to figure out how to fight him, because honestly, Asia has been one of the strongest regions, including Japan, in terms of JP players, mm -hmm. but again... KB's the only JP main here. Obviously, Jackie has the secondary, and he won with the character. So Truly, we'll, yeah. we'll call it two JPs here yeah. in this top He's 15. He's earned that 0.5 stat <laughs> to, like, a full a whole number, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but going into it, yeah, so DJ versus JP, I feel like has been, like, on the fence in terms of, like, who actually gets the advantage in this matchup. Mm. I feel like it's a throw 5-5. Five -five. DJ has a lot to really close the gap, and I think that's one of the biggest weaknesses that JP has, right? Being able to go through some of the phantoms before yeah. they even get that activity out. Um, a lot of the damage that DJ can can get against a multitude of characters is also a pretty big deal. And also, having to like play defense against Just Cool is so problematic, mm -hmm. right? But JP, mm -hmm. on the other hand, he could stop DJ more often than not from anywhere on the screen if he calls it right if he calls it right yes yeah and, and again you know you could always name a match as 5-5 five five when you know both sides of the players complain about the matchups <laughs> that's fair you know that's fair. when you know i hate this matchup i hate this matchup i've five, muted both five. of it's it five, five. yeah so i've muted both of it i've just done my own details and also like watching other streams too so it's gonna be interesting now in terms of like the player performance you know sasumo has been very very active uh, he was been he's been a part of like the the kimono michis that Daigo's been throwing on also. Mm. I think there's a lot of a lot more exhibitions that Daigo's been throwing up in his camp as well um, to kind of give a lot of these players a big chance to become pros or whatever wish they they want fulfilled right uh, in terms of like what they want in esports and Daigo has actually been putting on this program to help a lot of these players Sosmo is actually one of them to get like full citizenship and actually like pursue Whoa. and pursue <laughs> not citizenship sorry like a uh, full like esports clearance really oh, to be like a fully oh, fledged oh, pro oh, right, in right, japan right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, why did i say gotcha. citizenship sorry but full fledged <laughs> full fledged pro esports player in japan and continue like his his uh so, current living situation in japan right so i mean you say he was born in brazil He's, uh, yeah, he's he's Brazilian. Okay, okay. And so he's just out here in Japan now. Yeah, he's been there okay. for like, a, I don't even know, like maybe like a decade already. But okay. maybe I'm wrong on that. But he's been there for a very, very long time. So with that in mind, though, KB, Bon Bon, bon he is a player that we've been watching for decades as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you saw, I mean, I think it was 35 years old, uh, as mm -hmm. you saw uh, in the in that profile. Minimum so, decade, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's Minimum. been, he's definitely been playing fighting games for quite some time, mm -hmm. and definitely a name that we've been seeing around the parts, you know, from all the different games and Since such. 2009. So. Yeah, I've been, I haven't seen that name since 2009. Dude, the craziest thing about that, too, is when we say, like, 2009, we talk about that, like, how long ago? You remember when O-Niners were a thing, man? So no. <laughs> <laughs> says the O-Niner, right? So says the O-Niner. Oh, uh, man. But again, I mean, if you are an O-Niner, you are definitely a veteran of the scene now. You mm. have been here for quite mm. some time. And again, one of my favorite things about what Street Fighter VI has really done is it's brought back all the gen generations we've seen a good uh smattering of players from all the different generations we've seen a lot of old school players and now we're bringing a ton of new school players yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's great you know even from like the other generations we talked about ksk a little bit earlier off stream like yo ksk was in our yeah. dude i did a i did an exhibition for mexico a tournament and like there was one player who's like 13 years old in there you know yeah. <laughs> it's crazy i've seen 13, that over in the dr years. as well there was like yeah. a there was like an 11 year old player uh competing so over at blink i love it i love uh, seeing it Oh, that was actually too far. <laughs> yeah, JP couldn't get the whole top confirm off of that. No, well, you just what you were talking about, where DJ can really just cause problems for JP in the corner. Oh, nice amnesia. Oh, he went for the throw, but it was too early. He hadn't run out of the invul frames just yet. Let's burn out his energy. There is a little oh, too on deck for Sasuke, yeah. by the way, but I this chip might be enough. Yeah. I mean, once you start, if you're in level two and you're, I mean, if he gets to level two and you're in burnout, that's, 
I feel like that's basically it at that point. He did so. have a decent amount of life left, though. He had like a chunk on him. I just don't know if it, he would have survived. And, I mean, that's one thing. You have to block everything as well. So that's a difficult call. But either way, KD, he fought his way out of the corner once. Ooh, damn, that's a lot. That is a, a, a hefty fine yeah, to pay for jumping out of the corner. Didn't try to go for a side switch on that one, though. So it's good for the damage. And there you go. That's one of the problems right there. That drive rush from DJ is so fast. Sometimes it's hard, it is hard for JP because if he tries to do something, you just get punched in the face. Tried to perfect parry that with a little too early. Oh. Oh, oh my I god! Like the idea, but he wasn't expecting the teleport, the window activation, and now you're burned out again. Yeah. And he has a level two. That, that was a combo, so it's yes. not gonna splat. But it doesn't matter because he's got all the meter. Gonna be able to finish this off with a level two combo. Two roundhouses to start off that combo battle. <laughs> <laughs> One to link the phantom. Two to connect off of the phantom. Yep. Jesus. This very nice. Be, this very nice. nice. Really uh, Lushka, very, very powerful level two right what there. What did you call me? <laughs> I didn't know that was the level two, actually. Yeah. Another fantastic start for Sasuke, but again, KB being able to fight out of the corner. You can't count him out the drive rush forward. Oh, punch counter. counter. Yeah. It was a drive parry attempt. Hard knockdown in yet. No! Oh, no what? Way. He used it to set up an overhead? I love that recognition from Sasamo. Oh, but he's burned out now, so you're going to have to hold this at this point. At this point, you might just block everything and just let the chip, because he can't chip you that badly. You know, you're going to gain your meter back every time you block anything. So there you go. Yeah. You still get to throw out an air slasher as well yeah. to at least, like, cut one of the sequences. Yeah, and if you get the trade, then JP's almost that thing. Oh, what a perfect carry. Is a lot cleaner from the side of Sosimo, in my opinion, in comparison to how he performed earlier in the top 16 side and winners against uh, Pilano. Not just going to drive rush forward. I appreciate that. Sosimo looking for a way as he closes the gap manually, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, Over throw. Okay. Oh, counter hit, but didn't cancel it into anything. Just a lot. Oh, the meeting of the drive rushes. DJ coming out victorious. Okay, we got the perfect parry this time in the back, though. That is everything right now. Oh, no, but you that was just so let him just get right out of the corner. I, I can't imagine what KB was trying to do. I mean, like, it's, it's that was a really sharp angle where he's reluctant to end the air with crouching heavy punch. I totally understand that. But man, yeah, that's just yeah. to eat the cross up afterwards. That's, yeah. that's I, I feel like it was one of those, your brain kind of mixed up like should i anti-air no i can't anti and then i wait i gotta block the right way and then it was too late by that point and he just ate that cross up i thought you were gonna hit me with the garrett this is your brain and this is your brain on jp like, wow I, that is a, don't, worry don't worry about that don't worry about that don't worry about that are you old enough for that reference oh, KB off to a great start to start things off too i gotta say you know sasimo has been the one that initiate majority of these rounds and like I said, the triple lights are starting to become something the players are looking for. They'll try to drive perfect parry. That last one. Oh, out of the corner. Counter hit as well. No side switch. Just goes for the damage. Which is totally fine for Sasama. Oh, I feel like oh, that right there is why exactly he doesn't matter. Oh what? my god, he doesn't mind losing the corner, but you know, oh no. This also could be. Catastrophic for Sasuke. Yeah. But you know what? He keeps throwing those flashes because he's willing to trade. He's willing to trade. Go ahead and throw out a spike. Go ahead and throw that out. I don't care. True. That's a good observation, right? Just do it. But okay, at one point, I love that. Yeah. But at one point, do you become too predictable? Now uh -oh, the level two is coming uh -oh, out. He gets uh -oh. to close the gap still and forces. Uh, no way! He, he got hit from that it. far. He just he ate it. it. What was that from Sasamo? Ooh, just tried to block it. Failed, unfortunately. I think it's what? Mid, low, high, low, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. What was that for Sauce? Yeah. This ended up being that's gonna be brutal, but counter hit, light punch, gets the link. Oh, perfect parry, and that punish is a counter. punish counter, yep. Oh, but you can't combo, you cannot punish the throw with the mid screen with that OD amnesia. A lot of low medium kicks. Going under, uh, pretty much unpunished. Oh no, you just got hit on the other side. And he 
Amnesia. Not, oh, oh my god. I, I see what he tried, but nice jump right there. And I love that air-to-air -air option from KB, but Sasuke again with the sauce of his own from the drive rush. This is a very expensive kill. But, but it does kill. <laughs> but it is a kill nonetheless. All right. So now we are going to final game, final round here. Bamaban against Sasamo. Bamaban, aka KD. Oh, no anti air sight again. One of the big, big weaknesses that was highlighted from Sasamo's performance for the winners. No background house, no nothing. No charge maintained either. Bring out those fake phantoms right there, those fake ghosts. Yeah, again, no anti-air, and here we go. And he's so low, is he gonna try to drive parry it? No, he tried to manually block everything, but he still gets caught. And now you get burned out in the corner? This is not looking good for Sasamo at all. This combo is so cool. Oh, but he went for a, a setup off of that. Nice throw, it's got the check! You died. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I feel like this was like a Souls game. You yeah, died. is that what that, that was? Is basically, yeah, like the the, the Resident Evil. Oh you yeah, are you dead. are dead. Oh, KB man. finishing it out with a perfect. Sasamo no longer in contention to make it into Cap oh. on Cup. Outside of, uh, I mean, there still is the last chance qualifier, obviously. Oh, Sasamo, of course, man, of course. What a what a valiant effort to see his progression as uh, he's played in so many different tournaments and also part of the. Uh, Ibushigan squad. Mm -hmm. I love seeing him mm -hmm. and the way he's oh. playing. But KB also, another dominant player from the Nagoya Oja camp, is overall so satisfying to watch. But it's been back and forth. I think, you know, Sasamo, there's a lot to be said in regards to what he decided to do in terms of netting the damage or keeping that corner positioning. But uh, it was that the was defense where it was like yeah. a little questionable. And it truly was a little bit questionable. It all revolved around the level two, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and then, yeah, there we go. The finish right there with that stand heavy punch. Gets the knockdown and the juggle without the drive rush. Uh, one of the powers that JP has with that standing heavy punch. And there it is right there. KB, as you can see, going to go forward. He will be booked for tomorrow. Again, mm -hmm. uh, top eight nice will work. be tomorrow. So we'll see him there. He gets to chill and uh, study his matchup, and the matchup he's going to study is either going to be against a Ken or a Cammy. Jesus. So, I mean, he probably wants... Ah, these days, JP Cammy is not terrible for JP mm -hmm. anymore, I feel mm -hmm. like. It feels so. that way. It truly feels that way, but we'll find out momentarily, right? We still have those last three games to play out for the mm -hmm. loser side to get the rest of our top eight. But speaking of which, if you guys want to take a break for yourselves also, and you guys haven't been doing so yet, be sure to check it out. Pocus has been a really, really fun mini game to uh, kind of play on the side, right? I've seen a handful of players uh, kind of post their characters that they get after like training and raising them uh, over time. I've seen one person with Balrog thus far, oh. and it was Superian. Oh. Superian got both Balrog and Bison nice. in Pocus, which is actually pretty damn cool because I didn't even know they existed. Like I didn't even know like how many so different characters. Japan you could get. Balrog and Bison or American ah, Balrog yes. and Bison. So <laughs> boxer and dictator is okay, what it was. But okay. again, if you want to take a break from the game, head over to the Bucklers Boot Camp where you can play Pocus, which is again a mini game in which you develop your character by training all of these cute dot characters and you never know what you're going to get it is a box of chocolates for sure the service is based on the motto praise and develop to get the best outcome you can and of course it is free to register so again be a, be sure to check this mini game out and uh play against your fellow pockets players yeah exactly and you know we talked about this a little bit earlier you know the cpt midwest cpt east are coming up you know what's the best? The best way to watch these are is to buy yourself some Chipotle and eat their carne asada while you watch the carnage going down in these tournaments over there. So the carne asada, again, is only back for a limited time only. And, you know, if you're playing your cards correctly, you can do what I do. Just order a bowl of yourself, a burrito bowl of carne asada or whichever meats you want. You can do carnitas. You can do their chicken. You can even go for their tofu options there if that's your choice. And, you know, as you keep building up those points, then you use it for some free chips. Ah, uh, every time. So yeah, tech. so I, I like just that. keep using it for the free chips. So I love the guac with the chips, man. And you know what? I, I don't know what it is, but like those chips almost never last me getting home. 
Like I eat them <laughs> in the car. Like as I'm driving home, I'm just like chomping on the chips. And by the Wait time till I you get see them towards I, the end of this broadcast. Yeah. He'll be chomping on some more chips. <laughs> yeah, so they're usually gone by the time I reach home. But you know, that's why I use the tech, right? So you gotta you, eating in the car is like I don't know why I like eating in the car so much. But yes, pick up yourself some Chipotle. The carne asada is back on the grill for a limited time. And shout out to Chipotle for partnering with Capcom uh, f uh, for Street Fighter VI's launch. It's been a, a wonderful, wonderful partnership. And so there you have it right there. But again, we've only got three more matches left to find out who is going to be in the top eight for tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. Stick around until after this break. Chipotle's carne asada is back. It's our most tender cuts of steak, grilled and seasoned with cumin, oregano, and coriander. Finished with fresh lime and hand chopped cilantro. Carne asada. This is our best steak ever. Time to work, time to work. When inhaled, choreomertin blocks the gamma amino butyric acid receptors in the central nervous system, causing spasmodic muscle contractions. Master, it's a work of art! It's perfect! What to do with you now? So, shall we put him out of his misery? <laughs> I present the Hunter from Kamura.
none of us healthy, the pressure don't stop. Until I'm in the top, see the bottom seeds watch. They all won't see me flop, but I'm stepping on them, watch, let them watch. Born ready to fight, this is my moment. Coming for it all, just show me my opponent. Born to be great, I'm a legend in the making. And this is mine for the taking. Cause I got what it takes to be on top. I'm number one, cause I don't stop. A fighting game god, the one, the only, Tokido. What's going on with you, bro? Hey, good to see you. I'm good to see you too, man. You know, the first thing I gotta ask you is, what's up with the fitness? You looking lean and everything. My man is looking looking nice and swole. I know like a, a couple of years ago, you got more heavy into that. Oh, uh, what you. got you so far into uh, fitness? And you know, how's your fitness journey been so far? Uh, I exercise three times in a week. And uh, yes, it helped me a lot, even in fighting game. Yeah. It's, uh, I can concentrate, focus yeah. much more in the game after I do exercise. It's very, it's, it's much, it helped me a okay. lot. So what keeps you motivated right now? You've already won so much, you're an EVO champion. Now, what is your motivation to keep improving? Oh, it's a good question. It's a deep question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, actually I won EVO and a lot of tournament, but all over the world, still there are so good players. Yeah. I want to beat them again, again. Okay. Because they keep on practice to beat me. Yeah. I need to beat them again. Yeah, yeah. okay. That is my yeah, motivation. It's the principle. Okay, yeah, you're like a Michael Jordan mentality or Messi or something like that. I understand that fully. What makes Japan so strong when it comes to Street Fighter? Ah, because it is from Japan. You know, Capcom is from Japan. That's true. And uh, we have history from arcade. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 30, 30 years ago yeah. in arcade, too many players compared to maybe other countries. Yeah. Then we keep on practicing. Then, yes, we are strong. But recently, recently everyone, Korea, yeah, Dominican yeah, Republic. Very good. Yeah, Dominican Republic is nice. You know, um, of course, you and Mina, amazing sets and stuff like that over time in history. Um, you know, another thing I want to ask you about with, with Japan, what has it been like seeing the younger players get so much better? And why do you choose to help them improve when they're trying to come for your spot? You still help them get better. Why is that? We, uh, we have bad memory. At the beginning, a lot of players were there. But yeah. gradually, the number of players uh, goes down. Yeah. But now, it's a big wave. New fighting game wave is coming. So I we have experience, but experience. So yeah, now so we keep them. Yes, want to keep, keep playing them. instead of them just losing all the time and then yes. not want to play anymore. Yes, that makes a yes. lot of sense. But in the tournament, I want to beat the yeah, young yeah, player. Yeah. So. Yeah. Spoken like a true ambassador, the one and only Tokido. So good talking to you, brother. And we are gonna head back to some more CPT Japan action. I love the political response of the ambassador, <laughs> but also the true nature of the competitor at the same time. It's like, yeah, we're going to help the younger players, the newer generation, but we're also going to beat them down and turn them yeah. well, really, really well spoken. And hopefully he gets to continue that actually in the rest of the That's top 16, true. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fish is here with James Chen. We are of the same voice, but still here to talk to you <laughs> before, so, with some Street Fighter 6. No, you're not listening to the in-game commentary. This is real life. This is live. Uh, I didn't even think of saying that. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> At this hour, we can say anything. Uh, Tokido versus Mizuha is what's coming up next. But if you take a look at the bracket, we've already established our first candidate from the loser side into top eight, and that is KB. So Tokido versus Mizuha coming up next, then followed by Itabashi Zanyu versus Jackie, then Narikun versus Naoman. Your thoughts on this upcoming matchup, James? Well, uh, again, uh, Tokido just lost to Akira's Kami. And so he's got another Cammy here who just defeated Daigo's Ken. So right now, this ken Cammy matchup is not looking particularly strong for the Ken side of things. Mm. So I'm curious to see if Tokido, you know, is going to bring something different here. Or, you know, if Mizuha plays a different style enough from Akira that, you know, anything that Tokido learned from that match might not apply here. 
I feel like there are some subtle approaches that are different from, sorry, yeah, I guess I should say that. Subtle approaches that are different from Mizuha and Akira, but I will say Akira is more prone to engaging in the air, spending the meter also mm -hmm, for some of these mm -hmm. OD dive kicks. We've seen that a bunch, but Mizuha, I feel like he's changed up his offense the last couple of weeks since we saw him. I know we were watching him over at Street Fighter League for the playoffs, but I think uh, his his approach with Kami has been a lot more of a stable pace and less aggressive than Akira, yeah. in my opinion. But once he gets that knockdown, it's a whole different story. Well, for sure, one thing I think that's going to not happen and his Tokido won't be jumping himself into the corner at the end of rounds anymore, hopefully. But there we go. Look at that dive kick to punish the stand heavy kick. Oh, damn! What? He's still going to jump back into the corner. James, yeah. you're a liar. Oh, man. Well, he didn't jump into the corner, fortunately. So. <laughs> yeah. Side switch there. But speaking of corners here, that's what... Oh, oh DP afterwards. Yeah, that's definitely a plus situation there for Tokido. But look at that counter poke from Mizuha. Mizuha gets that free jump in. That's what the dive kicks do. And as I've mentioned before, I do think that one of Tokido's weaknesses is his anti-air. Oh, that's totally a fine trade for Tokido. Oh, yeah, especially with drive rush from downtown in the throw. Mm -hmm. All right, so T Tokido round number one right there. Yeah, so, I, but I mean, again, for everybody, it's hard to anti-air Cammy because you see her jump and you think the dive kick is coming right away and then she does nothing and it's too late. But Tokido on the point right now with that dive kick, uh, with the anti-air. Oh, oh, that's that meaty. meaty enough. Yep. With the Jinrai extension and that's going to be level three. Ouch. This is going to hurt a lot. Mizuha, though, still sitting on barely outside of level three, but any combo will probably lead to it if he can get the hit. But Tokido comes for the throw. Mizuha's got to do something, so he goes for the level one. Okay, so here we go. He's not going to have the level three, though, so for Tokido, that's kind of okay. Mm -hmm. I like, love the response, too, after that block dive kick. Go on. I was about to say, if you can bait out that level one, now you know you can't lose that giant 50% yeah. chunk from a critical art, right? Way less pressure, for sure. You're yeah. gonna be uh, in a situation oops. where it's death by a thousand cuts. Oops, is right, but even a bigger oops from Mizuha, not getting the appropriate punish. What was that? Mm, that's an unfortunate situation, and now Tokido has the corner position, and there's that standing light punch that Tokido's been so well known for using back in Street Fighter V and here in Street Fighter VI as well. Man, he's so reluctant to anti-air. I know the threat of the dive kick is something to keep in mind, but there are certain angles where I feel like he could maybe right. jab uppercut. Even just heavy uppercut, the side swipe, the dive kick, even if the dive kick starts up. That is fair. That is fair from further angles. Yeah, mm -hmm. Damn, that feels with everything. <laughs> with some drive gauge behind it, Tokido. Look at that match point already. Listen, man, I saw Chris T. He posted it up in the, in the chat. Cammy over Ken. Well, All right, maybe he cursed it. He might have just cursed it. <laughs> it's been looking that way up to this point. But Tokido now coming back here, trying to end Mizuha again from downtown. That drive rush in the throw, but there's that side switch that Cammy has. She has such great control over what side she's on. Okay, throw again. This is so impactful for me. What strategy? What was that? That might have been a try to attempt as a cross cut, but came out as a heavy kick. There's that side switch again, and now Mizuha's going to be able to take this without like spending that. any meter. He's still alive. Here we go. With all the bar in the world for both ends. Sakito could manage a big opener to shut down Mizuha for good, but we'll see if it even comes to that. Mizuha trying to be a little bit antsy. This is the starter we were looking for. Sakito is looking at half health damage, perhaps. Yeah, there was no, very little scaling on that whole sequence right Damn. there. Man, but again, not a Whoa. true life lead. Mizuha Crouching. has the meter, but look at this damage uh, that Tokido uh, is just OD? dishing out. Okay. So uh, pressure, that's it. The classic stand heavy punch, punish counter, no matter what range you hit that, except for absolute max range, it's going to link into that crouching medium kick, and you get the Tatsu afterwards. Tokido 2 0 over Mizuha. The murder face is back. Oh, that standing heavy punch hurts me so much deep oh. down into the soul.
I will say there was a lot of uh, interesting reads on the side <laughs> right. of Takedo uh, against Mizuha's offense, right? That hooligan to start things off, he had to jump back against it. Uh, and even further on out, I think his offensive pressure, just knowing Mizuha was, is prone to doing like OD uppercuts or something on reversal, he still was willing to pursue his offense no right. matter what. So like that read is like, you know what? I will, <sighs> I will keep on playing my offense. I don't care if you're going to spend your OD for escape. And that's totally fine. Yeah, and you know what? There's that strategy out there. If you're, you know, playing a game or having trouble accomplishing something, you go and complain about it online, and then all of a sudden it works, right? Yeah, like, sure. I can't do this, and it works. So shout-outs to Chris T for his talking about Cami greater than Ken, and, you know, it. I think he did it on purpose. I think that's a win for I both ends, right? Like, if, yeah, if Takedo uh -huh. manages to lose, he's... He right, wins. Right, Christy yeah, wins. Uh -huh. If Tokido wins anyway, it's like, oh, well, we got Tokido moving forward <laughs> now. Sorry to all the Mizuha fans, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that's I guess that's the what they're thinking. Right there, but man, yeah. I'm such a like. Listen, man, Mizuha being out of the tournament is such a big deal because he has been one of the big trendsetters for Kami alongside right. a, lo a lot of the other pioneers. Right, Punk the God being the main source I of mean, Kami uh, exposure. He's the guy who sent Kakaru to losers bracket. Right. True. I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that he's been doing all tournament. He he also uh, sent Vampy uh, out of the tournament as well. So you know he was playing really. really really strong here but unfortunately his run ends here but that's just the way this top 16 it's works i mean look at, look at all the people that we've lost and now we're gonna lose either itabashi zangief or jackie coming up jesus here. and you know if itabashi goes with marisa or zangief i feel like jp is the choice I feel like JP is so? the choice here for both characters. I, I agree. I think a lot of players would agree with that as well. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly, I feel like that's going to be a little scary, don't you think? I mean, look, uh, again, I, 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 oh, wow. We've been asked for a blind pick between the players here, too. So interesting. So they're not going to be able to see it on the screen. Do you, think it's, do you think it's for... It'll boss you to, to move on with like a modern Marisa or a classic Marisa. Oh, Is that I why he's asking know. for it? Or do you think he would actually move on to like Zangief for, for Kimberly? Because sure. here's the thing, right? I actually think Kimberly does pretty decently against Zangief, but I personally hate the Marisa matchup. But again, that's just me and I'm a scrub, right? So I don't know. It, it might not. I mean, I know some Marisas hate fighting Kimberly as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, but like I said, I feel like JP fights both of them. Pretty just decently, fine. Right? right? So I don't know if it's for J. I don't know for Jackie if there really is a blind pick kind of choice here. I mm -hmm. think it's just it's JP or JP at this point. I wonder point. who actually asked for the blind pick. Was it Itabashi oh. who had requested it? We did get that note in from the producers just now. It was oh, Itazan it was who actually Itazan. asked okay. who requested okay. for the blind pick. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I can't imagine. Maybe there's something in mind where he wants to play like Zangief. Like, or maybe he has like, cer like certain nuances mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. JP matchup where he's like, you know what? I think I'll let my Zangief out early or something. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll let my Zangief rock because I do like this matchup or something like that. Because he's been uh, the type of player to to exercise that. Or like, <laughs> Remember, maybe he, like, you know, modern classic movies. I can't even imagine what it's for. Remember, he busted out the Zangief against Daigo in Capcom Cup that one year and mm. beat his guile. <laughs> he Zangief. also... Oh, no, no, wait. That was on an online CPT. That's it was an it was. online yeah, CPT, yeah, yeah. right? We yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, looking right at him and actually got the ODS. Yeah, or sorry, uh -huh, EX, uh -huh. ODSPD. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> EXSPD. But no, there was also a moment in time uh, not too long ago during the playoffs where he actually was sent for like the sudden death against Nemo and he actually played against the JP with Marisa mm. and actually found success to that. So it's very okay, interesting. I okay. don't know. I, I can't imagine like what he could be asking for the, this, this blind pick for. I mean, maybe he feels like Marisa does do really well against JP. And so, well, then, I mean. That's then, just him. <laughs> yeah, but if that's, that's the case, him. then. Then, then he would just go with Marisa. Exactly right? that. So right? that's why it's yeah. such a weird, uh -huh. Uh -huh. A, a weird request. Perhaps. Very interesting. Maybe he'd want to like show off his Zangief. There's something in him where he's just like, <laughs> I, need to, I need to show off this tech. Right. Huh. Interesting. I mean, again, look, Zangief obviously is a character that a lot of people consider not particularly strong, but Zangief is just also one of those characters that... That's in Capcom Cup. Yeah, one is in <laughs> yeah. Cap... There's one Zangief, no Kimberly's in there right now, right? So, you know, uh, but also at the same time, Zangief's just one of those characters that when he's on that role, like, he just... He... He breaks hearts. You know what I mean? And like, bones. <laughs> and tendons. <laughs> Very brains. true. And you know what? I mean, honestly... That costume three was like such a good buff for Zangief. 
<laughs> that co- True. That costume. He's got me. some bouncy glasses. Yeah, dude. And it stays that, on his head. That, I mean, as soon as I, that costume came out, I'm, I, I took Zangief to master, dude. I yeah. had to do it because that, that costume is so good. It's really, really, really good. <laughs> There's gotta be like some like more cosmetics you could add to like the characters individually. That oh, would be kind of right. cool. Yeah, yeah. Tournament legal cosmetics in the battle hub, right? That'd be cool. Yeah, Capcom. Mm-hmm. Hello. Yeah, come on, come on. I'm already go. under there. I'm already under there. Like, <laughs> their grip. So it's like I just gave them a free idea. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> that was my bad. For those of you who are asking, uh, why are we taking so long to get this match? I'm going well. It is on. Actually requested a blind pick, but we are now. Currently underway with the matchup Blind between pick. himself and Jackie. Why pick clearly easier in person? <laughs> yes. Whisper in my ear. And then, yes. Oh, he goes with the Kimberly against the Marisa. So, you know, I mean, it could be a situation again where Jackie doesn't feel as bad about this matchup. Because again, if you do get Marisa in the corner, she's very susceptible to the throws and the mix ups. And who better is on offense in the corner than Kimberly? <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> Perhaps just, not can, in terms of mixed potential, and, but and, damage. And Ken and Ken, Luke, 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 Where are you going? <laughs> oh, oh my God, that damage! Yeah, this is the scary point right now. You just when Marisa gets you in the corner, it's so terrifying. Nice elbow right there gets the run. And no, damn, he stuffed the heck out of that yeah, run. What no, was that? No reaction. Beast is on. He just stood his ground. Wasn't worried about the, the, the Izuna drop, the Bushin throw at all. Empty jump in the throw. Oh, he's he got it. Him. No, I thought that was going to hit. What? I thought that was the appropriate response, but it's such Save. a sharp angle. It doesn't cover directly above her. Wow. That's crazy. <coughs> Taking notes. <laughs> That's fair. Uh-oh, here we go. Corner position again and again. Uh, Marisa gets Oki off of every single dr- uh, knockdown because her drive rush That's just so doesn't cool. stop moving. Uh-oh. Nice! There we go. Gets the full uh, punish counter combo right here. And this is going to be great damage and pressure here in the corner. Ooh, just walked up and blocked. Was worried about a wake up there. And again, Ikazan is not scared, so... Does Jackie want to risk going for the throw option off of that run? You still not oh, doing it down. down. Yeah, there it is. That's why you go for that as much as possible. It forces the opponent oh, into a guess. Burnout. burnout. This is a trouble situation. He nope. went for it, but it's blocked in time. A punish, and yes, maybe this is why Itazan wanted the blind pick because he doesn't want to play the Misa versus Kimberly. I yeah. wonder. I wonder. I wonder oh. how right that statement is. Oh. I wonder how true Are that we gonna statement see the Zangief? is. Are we gonna see the Zangief? What's yeah. your experience gonna... like? I mean, I know you've played Zangief a good amount as well, right? Yeah. Like you kind of dabbled with him. You went through like the struggles, the online struggles. Now, if you were to take your experiences from both characters as individuals, what do you think it's like yeah, there against it is. each other? So the problem is, Zangief has never had weaker defense. Than in Street Fighter VI, and I feel fact? yeah, I feel like Kimberly's uh, rush down against Zangief is brutal in okay. the corner, and so that's that's kind of why I feel like Kimberly has a slight advantage in this match. But apparently, this is something that Itazan feels comfortable with. But this is the this is the problem right there. Uh, Zangief doesn't have a wake up SPD that can beat stuff. Right. Oh. Larry it doesn't work on the instant jump ins. It's so expensive to get some of these hits in yeah. the actual big conversion, or at least a oh, no. favorable position. What was that there. supposed to be? I'm not sure. I can't even tell you. I think he was definitely. Oh, oh, that's so beneficial for him. Oh boy, that's going to be a good amount of damage right there. And yeah, Ita's on. I don't know. Maybe he feels comfortable in this fight. Oh, that's going to be. Oh, not enough. That's not going to... No way. Level 2. With also no the extra damage. stamina. Dude, yeah. that thing does no damage at all. I mean, he's a beefy boy. But <laughs> he's got some extra stamina to him, right? True, true. Yeah, and there it goes. Jackie taking first round. Although, very close back. Oh, the empty low. That's so dirty. Four throw. Get, and also gets the big mix mm-hmm. after the run. It's so difficult I feel like, for a lot of these players. Oh, that is a great a trade. Oh, that wasn't even a true combo. Mm-hmm. I think he thought it was going to be a cross-up, so he just ate that heavy kick from the front. Yeah, you can't get out that way. Oh, oh damn, empty jump low. Jackie got the might be able two. to take him down. Is this, is this enough? Kill? Is this going to kill? No it way! Is. <laughs> 
and there you go. So again, the Kimberly, you see, as soon as Zangief gets put in the corner, it is a tough situation there because, you know, again, Zangief in Street Fighter 4, you know, obviously he had the wake up EX SPD. Lariat's always been a valid wake up option. In from older behind games. him, too, or at least getting him from behind, yeah. at least for anti -area. And then, you know, uh, valid uh, wake up options with Lariat against jump ins, etc., etc. But in this game, he just doesn't have that. And so Kimberly's pressure in the corner is so terrifying to Zangief. And that that was a really unfortunate <sighs> call out, too, man. Itabashi had the right idea, but just not the right angle. I didn't think it would be that sharp. Yeah, I, I always felt like Marisa's level two what hit a transition. above Did her Did you see really that replay well. transition? That was sick. <laughs> As Kimberly that. was moving, it was the same exact shot from what it looked like from character to character. Nice. Okay, sorry guys, that was actually really, really a, a sick cut. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, that's, that was just like a really rough draw for Itabashi. Yeah, again, hit going to the Zangief didn't here. do him any didn't do him any favors. Yeah, I mean that first round looked really good for Itabashi, but he still lost it in the end, and then the second round just did not go his way. And so there you go. Uh, Itabashi Zangief, again, another uh, longtime veteran that we've seen in this go down here. And honestly, with Mago and Daigo both going out in the loser's bracket, and then uh, we also now see Itabashi Damn, going out. Man. Tokido's the only, like, old guard here that's really holding it down right now, honestly. Mm, and he has to face well, off against another guard, right? KB. Yeah. Right? And, 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 the only two standing. Yeah, and to be fair, yeah, KB is definitely an old guard as as well, but Nari Kun and Nauman, uh, if I'm not mistaken, both very young players here. Yeah, coming. yeah, we saw their age, right? Under 30 club. But Jackie, man, I will say, Jackie has been, I think, the MVP of the weekend oh, thus far. Exactly. Based on, <laughs> oh, nice. It's always it's always deceptive, I feel like. But Nari Kun versus Nauman, another Kim representative. That's huh? right, that's right. Yeah, going up against a Ken here. And, uh, you know, Ken. Again, with the range of his buttons, once he gets Kimberly in the corner, it can be a tough situation. And, uh, you know, anytime you have to deal with the crouch and medium kick drive cancel uh, from a character like Ken, it is kind of a, a tough neutral matchup for Kimberly. But again, Nani Kun is in this top uh, 16 for a reason, came True. here on the winner's side for a reason. So I'm sure he's going to have all the weapons necessary to fight Nauman here. Yeah, and we already seen what type of play we can get from like Kim and Ken over the years, right? I feel like, you know, Kimberly can still have a shot at taking down some of the greats because of oh, how yeah. deceptive she can be. It really is up to the Kimberly player to keep their mixes intact and also not be a little bit overzealous with the runs. We've seen Narukun fall short because of that exact right. tactic, right? Trying mm -hmm. to steal away some turns, mm -hmm. trying to get some runs where it, he thought he could get away with against someone like Kazunoko. Yeah, who checked the run <laughs> every, single, every time. single time. Yeah. So if Nauman watched that match, that's something he's got to be aware of himself. And you saw right there, no run cancel from uh, Nadi Kun. So maybe taking a little lesson from that. And here we go. And again, Kim is one of those characters. You get someone in the corner, and here's the situation. He's a mix up. Yeah. Jesus. You, gotta, you gotta deal with this mix up. So what's the setup over here? He goes for the reset, and ah, see, that's a high low mix up. So he had the next level there yes. already. You can parry just to avoid the high-low, and so he had the punish counter with the throw. There's so many moments of intricate decision-making that really, Woo! really need to count. I think That's that the second time Nauman's dropped that, yeah. that sequence, the fancy sequence. Mm -hmm. Checks with the stand light kick. Let us go into the corner. Ooh! Trade, and actually Nauman kind of walks out of the corner and gives Narikun the space to, to, to really bring it back to the neutral. Word, he's still... Get it within range for the punish counter against the elbow drop? That had to be headed to be good. That was too far, but not quite fast enough for the punish right there. Oh, what stuffed it? Yeah, he tried to be beauty just a little later. That's meaty, and he's going to be able to extend it, but he drops the combo. But unfortunately, I don't know what Nari Kun did, but he went into the air and just got hit. I think so. Unfortunate situation for Nari Kun right Damn, there. Damn, that was at the toenail! Dude, that, like I said, those crouching medium kicks is set at that. And, you know, obviously Kimberly's standing medium kick just as much range as those crouching medium kicks. But she has to do those while standing so she can get caught walking around in the toes very easily. Not going to slip up on the anti air this time. Nauman trying to drive us forward. And now that sequence actually is taking a start right back. Are you dead? I guess not a few. I, I don't know. I didn't know if two hits fire, right? But it was off of a... It's alive still. 
but Kimberly not necessarily known for the crazy comebacks, but he hasn't activated that level three yet. So if he can get that a hit into level three, he can start the whole sequence. That's a lot to ask for, man. As your drive game. Oh, oh, that's the classic two. <laughs> the drive rush cancel. It's the very early throw to bait out the win. We don't, I, see, we don't see that too often in this realm. I feel like that that's actually just a legit tactic. It is. It, you know, no, it absolutely is very valid. <laughs> oh, boy. It just, you don't see it this often. In right. <laughs> in my opinion, you don't see oh, that often. Oh, the that's meaty. Yeah, meaty. that's super meaty. And so you get the full juggle over here into the corner. Backs off, tries to bait out uh, something or try to get a throw out of uh, Naughty Coon, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Here we go, wall splat into the can. What's the mix up? Goes for button. Yep. Damn, nice. overhead is so good. Do it again. Yeah, off the medium Tatsu. Overhead is medium. Damn. Sit him down. That was sick. I didn't think that was going to oh. reach. And another shimmy. We're starting to see another weakness highlighted from the Articun's defense. Yeah, exactly. And again, when your life is that low and you can't take the throw anymore, it's just. You can just react. Oh, again! And that was, that was the heavy DP, wasn't it? I think. I had blink, I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, yep, here we go. Wall splat again, has a can, goes for the setup, baits it out, here we go. Does he know Jesus. how to combo off oh, of that? He does. Hell yeah, he, he does. does. Okay. That's not a baby. Oh, uh, level three time. Yeah, this is a great precision here. Try to put him down to the verge of death. Get your power up ready for level th uh, for round three as well. If you can finish this up. What, what a time to throw off that standing jet. Nautikun was not oh, able to no. get any sort of meaty. Throw. And this is so, so dangerous still yeah. for Nautikun. When you have no level one, that means you have no wake up off. Whoa, yeah. this conversion is sick. I definitely grabbed you by the headset, James. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> that was okay. your shoulder. It's okay. I definitely almost punched it's James. It's all right. It's all Jesus right. Jesus Christ. Critical Edge is attacked oh, now, but he's gonna get it! Oh no! I'm so sorry, Eliminates Nautical 2 to 0. Are you okay? I, 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 I think I'll be okay. okay. I think I'll be I'm okay. I'm so sorry. If, if I start talking like this, that was uh, it's because of the fat lip. It was, was a level was 3. Given, it was a level 3. My, I couldn't help it. That was my yeah. stand fierce. He, he, he wasn't ready for it. I was doing my best Naomi impersonation. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, what a turnabout, too, for Nauman, man. Yeah, that was unfortunate because Nauman, I mean, Nadi Kuhn had that round. He just, he had that round, but again, Ken does what Ken does, right? So, uh, and again, that crouching medium kick just reaches so, so far. far, man. I mean, he just has the right <laughs> range every single time, man. Uh, and this was a nice, perfect parry. He got the back throw in the corner. He got such the life lead off of this sequence right and the here. Read too. Yeah. Also, that came afterwards against the ODDP was so well played. But it was. But this back throw into the corner was so good. But then the crouch medium kick just finds the range, and that's. And again, one of the things that I've always said about Ken, one of his biggest strengths, is that run special move is basically a free OD move for him. And in fact, yeah. Run Tatsu and Run Dragon Lash oftentimes are better than the OD versions of those mm. special moves. Because of the utility behind it, right? Well, right. I mean, like, Dragon corner Lash sets you up for good damage right. and a side switch, and then you get the big corner carry from the Tatsu that could lead into a safe jump, or right. at least better, or really, really great. Like just, or overhead meaties or whatever right. you want. Right. And, and the crazy thing about that, that leaves Ken with so much meter to be able to True. spend for those drive cancels at the end to finish rounds off like that, even without the super. You saw Nama was able to finish that round. And he had like just under three bars, right. by the way. Even mm -hmm. in that situation where uh, Narikud had a significant life lead, he had the buff already, and he was like inching his way out of the corner. I'm like, all right, this is a very, very good spot for Narikud. When you uh -huh. see level two and you see Ken alive with drive gauge, it's like, dude, it's, it's, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you should really, really be right. thankful for getting out of the corner just yet because one single hit will lead to destruction. Exactly. So it's just, it's a, one of the benefits that I think Ken always has is he has meter to spend more often than right. a lot of other characters because right. to do the same things that Ken does with the run in the specials, most characters are spending 
meter much for, more, yeah, for drive more. rushes and for OD special moves and mm -hmm. such. Yeah. So I will say to Kimberly's advantage, when she gets openings like that, she can open you up for like another mix off of resets. Oh, like that's, yeah. That's her oh, advantage, yeah. uh -huh. right? Like, uh -huh. But she's, mm -hmm. it's expensive, right? Mm -hmm. And there's certain instances where you won't have that luxury yeah. as often. You talk to Cami players, you talk to Jury players, you talk to a lot of these players who use these other characters. They have to spend a lot of meter to accomplish those mm -hmm. kind of things to get the damage off their combos. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, can top five, maybe not top maybe. five. I don't know. I still think I he's mean, pretty good. Of, <laughs> I, I mean, both of them are on the loser side, so maybe. Yeah, right. right? Maybe, exactly. Maybe you're wrong. But exactly. The camis, <laughs> there's two camis in top in top eight right now on winner's side. So Yeah, yeah. I was going to say we could check in on the bracket, but we will be doing that a little bit after this break. In the meantime, we do want to remind you folks that we still have two more CPT events coming your way with one coming to a close. In terms of the registration, right, on Monday, January 8th at 9 a.m. PST, that is the cutoff time for one of the other big CPT events. That's right. It's U.S., Canada, East. This one is going to be a guaranteed bloodbath. Oh, oh man. Again, that's either Knuckle Do, Idom, or Punk qualifying. And that's just those three, right? How many other amazing players are in this East Coast region? I mean, this All is a, of them, remember dude. Canada East is included. So we've got like Flux Waves. We're going to get players like Space Boy. We're going to get all these great players in the east coast and yeah. it's just it's gonna be it's gonna I wonder be if Joel Uber Rogan's gonna even try to like play again oh that's right yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so again a lot a lot of talent just hovering in the east coast waiting for their moment to shine and that's gonna be very very soon again that registration closing Monday January 8th take advantage of that now over at Capcom Pro Tour .com to sign up because again you don't want to miss your shot at the big two million dollar prize pool yeah, and you know what? The best way to watch one of these events is, is to show the support for your favorite character. Buy the figure right here from Storm Collectibles here. And as they keep winning in the tournament, just, you know, hold them up and just like make the guy, make your figure go, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Pose them in their win poses and everything like that. So, you know, uh, you'll have the opportunity to cheer on your favorite characters. And you have good odds, right? There's a cami in different outfits. There's multiple cans, right? <laughs> I mean, Luke's here too. And even Blanca, right? Yeah. There's a Guile as well. So there you go. Chun Li could could be in there as well. You know, you see two versions of it. Absolutely. So you've got a lot of good options over here. Of and course. also to get yourself ready for the Akuma release. Boom! There's Akuma right there. <laughs> see, look, they have it all figured out. Be sure to check them out at stormco.com.hk. You saw Capcom teasing us with that Happy New Year's with the big Akuma art, dude. I mean, it was just like, come on. I'm dude. not gonna lie to you. I didn't even know it was like. Uh, like I thought it was gonna be like a, a trailer kind of thing. I'm like, oh, oh. I, I, I kept so my, kept I was <laughs> clicking on the image as if like this the the post had a video to it. I'm like, and then and then and I was just like, oh, it's a photo. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, the trailer's not. And I was like pressing on it. I'm like, it's a photo, dummy. Like that was that was my bad. Yeah, was I, my I bad. mean, but you know what? I mean, we've been seeing also a lot of photos of all that Chipotle food. Fortunately for us, after the break, we've got Chipotle oh. unwrapped, and I don't have to sit there and stare at photos. We're getting the chips and the queso oh. brought over here, and we'll be talking all about what to expect from the top eight tomorrow. So we're not quite done yet. Stick around until after the break to get the preview of what the top eight is going to entail tomorrow. So stick around. You're really making all of this by hand. Oh, yeah. The avocados are hand mashed, the chips are hand tossed, and everything is made fresh. You make it fresh every day? Yes, every day. The Chipotle way is we make it fresh every day. Sounds delicious. Let's get this mission started. More Street Fighter League. I know you can smell the tension in the air. We back in the field, back. We ready as time. Ooh, Ooh punish counters. Out of the huddle, you know that I cry. A dangerous smile, a weapon of choice from Christian and I. Season after season, it's only gotten better. Big bird in trouble. Oh. My end game is number one. I'm bet it all, give me my cash. So big game can't stop it. Take off like a rocket. Break it back, don't bend mine. I'm the one now, you can't hide. What an upset. What an upset. With all. Nobody saw this happening. I dare you to find me better Street Fighter. It's time to rise. This is our moment. This is our time. The time is now. It's time to rise. 
is unprecedented and unpredictable. It only gets better. It's alert nothing! Great oh, This is a different Chris CCH. I don't know who this young man is. My man looks so happy. Momentum, his speed in general is so hard. Metal RD taking it down defensively against the biggest threat that we've seen thus far. This is the hardest season of Street Fighter League ever. History in the making. This is our moment. This is our time. This kid is ridiculous. This kid is ridiculous. This is our time. He gives a kiss to the audience. I love that. Who is this thing? Go Objection! I always see nothing, I just barely scratch the surface Throw me in the rain, let me do my thing Thought they hit me deal, fight it through the pain When I'm in the zone, it's a motorway I ain't never say way. much, but you see me up top You see my numbers healthy, the pressure don't stop Until I'm in the top, see the bottom seats watch They all want see me flop, but I'm stepping on them Watch, let them watch Welcome back to the Chipotle Unwrapped segment where we talk about our top eight and who is the big cheese for today's top 16 overall <laughs> performance. My name is Vicious here with James Chen, and this guy was already chomping on the chips before we even started, man. Stop exposing me here. <laughs> I like how you look inside, I like, stop exposing I wasn't, me. I'm sorry I wasn't patient enough to wait for us to get back here before it was, I started. It was adorable. It was actually kind of funny. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm just as hungry and just as much of a fan, but you were already going in. I'm like, you know, it's appropriate. I don't, I don't want to I wait for this. And it's, th it's 3 in the morning, so we won't have <laughs> access to Chipotle. So this is right, like a bonus. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But uh, this is the big uh, Chipotle unwrapped segment where we kind of talk about the uh, the entire course of the top 16. But this one's a little bit special, right? With 925 players, there's still so many different <laughs> stories to unwrap. And uh, I feel like, you know, just this top 16 won't entirely do it justice. But that's what we have to do here and talk about some of the players that have, you know, uh, fallen short by the wayside, but still gave a valiant performance in their top 16 oh, run. Yeah. So kudos to everybody that's been participating and um, just under the thousand players that have been like, 
participating yeah. as well and everybody that's been following along this late or even early wherever you may be restreaming it doing your own analysis and also just you know enjoying yourselves over in the chat we appreciate you guys through and through so now we talk about our top 16 can we switch it up production let me take a look at that whoop yeah, we started here on the winner side, obviously. And uh, as you can see, Kazunoko, Otani, Akira, and Kawano are going to be the guys representing and mm -hmm. starting off the tournament tomorrow. So that's who we're going to be seeing here. And again, interestingly enough, we have two camis in here. We've got Kazunoko and Akira with the camis here. We could end up with a cami mirror. Mm -hmm. Nothing uh, cheesy about that, for yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, unless, of course, Otani with the Luke or uh actually we could end up with a luke mirror too that's exactly what i was gonna go for oh my gosh this is i didn't even realize this is cammy luke cammy luke so there you go uh interesting. interesting you know i feel like social media is gonna have a field day just based off of this top eight alone but when we switch <laughs> it up taking a look at the loser side where we had even more of a bloodbath we talked about the big storylines here but going through it kb versus key the battle of the k's uh, in this case kb He's been phenomenal with that JP thus far. Key is actually somebody I was looking forward to mm -hmm. watching because of his current accolades and the amount of people he's taken down on the way through. Uh, if you look at his overall record, he's taking down, taking down Udio, Nemo, and Higuchi. In my opinion, going into the top 16, Key was my MVP in terms of his performance. Yeah, with the Honda as well. Exactly that. a lot of people off guard, unfortunately. Uh, just ran into KB, and that was the end of his run. And we talked about Daigo losing his very first match to Hibiki the Beast to the Lily and then rattling off 11, 11 wins, in, wins in a row. straight, brother. That's I mean, rough. that guy was having some content on his stream. Let me tell you right now, if he was streaming his run, mm -hmm. but uh, went 11 games in a row, but unfortunately couldn't make it past Mizuha. Couldn't give us the Tokido and Daigo match that I know everybody at home Man. so wanted to see. I mean, shout out to Mizuha. We love him. But you know, everybody was like, Tokido Daigo. Oh, my gosh. But that would have been insane. Yeah. But uh, as you can see here, Jackie then was also able to take out Mago. Doing it with the JP, by the way. And we did get confirmation that against Kakeru, he did play Kim for at least a couple of the matches. It went 2-1. So he might have counterpicked at one point, but he did go with the Kim. And like I said... I do feel like that's a that's an even matchup. And that also could have gone the other way. Mago just slightly mistimed his uppercut. Ah, that's right. right. It, didn't, yeah. it didn't correct itself on the other side. And, and Jackie managed to get the full punish against Mago. It could have been the other way around. But still, I think Jackie, he's proved his worth. And we'll talk about that later. Nauman versus Yamaguchi was also a very, very hotly contested <laughs> matchup. Because these two have had so much history against each other. Whether it's in the CPT, World Warrior, or in Street Fighter League. These guys have been playing it out like crazy. So that's really, really difficult to manage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was actually just going to wait it out a little, <laughs> bit, a little bit longer. I just wanted to watch you eat that. But um, even further on, right, we had KB versus Sasamo afterwards, Tokido versus Mizuha. Really good timing, by the way. Um, KB versus Sasamo. I want to talk about Sasamo's performance overall, right? He fell short to Kawano, but he started to pick it up a little bit, right? I feel like there's just so much more potential to the way he's been playing DJ for me, like studying his CFN and whatnot. I feel like there's been so much more potential to him. We started to see him progress at least mm -hmm. on the loser side. Okay. In his performance in the winner side, I felt like his 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 offensive pressure or like his decision making was very linear. Mm -hmm. Right? He just wanted to get that right, drive right, right, and right. every single time, mm -hmm. boom, Luke happened. Crouching right. medium punch happened. Exactly. Kawano had that crouching medium punch ready to go mm -hmm. all the time. So yeah, it's just one of those things that you gotta be careful or like we said, drive rush into just cool low or something. Try Truly. to get a punish counter or something uh, to that degree. Hell yeah. And then Jackie taking out Itabashi's Zangief. So he took out That's Mago crazy. and off of a blind Ita pick too. Yeah, like. off of a blind pick and uh, did it with the Kimberly. And I I was saying like, I felt like the, the, the JP was the clear choice for him. But you know what? I love seeing him bust out this character as a character. Like I said, uh, there's only like, I think six characters who have no representation in Capcom Cup right now. And so uh, Kimberly is one of them. So keeping that hope alive, uh, <laughs> perhaps for with Jackie here. So that's really cool to see. But again, yeah. he took out Itabashi and Mago. Dude, like he took Proving out- his worth yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. He took out Itabashi and Mago. Oh yeah, and of course, uh, I missed the, the Tokido and Mizuha over here. Uh, did get his revenge against Kami. And so he will be in the loser side bracket over there. And as 
Tokido said last year, no Tokido, no Capcom Cup. Truly. So let's see if he can actually fulfill that uh, that promise here. Yeah. On top of that, obviously, we had Narukun versus Nauman. Uh, Narukun was in for like a rough shot. I think him losing very early on to Kazunoko, it's always going to be like a rough draw, right? When you are mm -hmm. the first to lose in your top 16 performance, you have to right. wait so, so long. I didn't actually get to look at his MR prior to <laughs> it. Right, I don't know if it was right. hidden yeah, or not. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, talking about that as well, um, him losing to Nauman, there was a couple of moments where I felt like he could have had it. It's just there was, it's, we talked about the nature of the management of drive gauge and also the meter, right? Just the damage output and the meter uh, accumulation is just so much different between the two characters. Their accumulation is so much different between the two yeah. characters, but it sets us up pretty nicely, I think, in my opinion, for our top eight. If we kind of switch it up and see that bracket filled in, whoop, there it is. Kazunoko versus Otani. Akira versus Kawano. Explosive. <laughs> it's going to be pretty damn fast. And again, these are going to be three out of five, but it feels like it, it might be over in the blink of an eye. Who knows? But losers round one, Nauman versus Jackie. Tokido versus KB. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a crazy one right here. Again, this is to qualify for Capcom Cup. One of these players is going to be representing Japan and playing in just over a month at Capcom Cup for that chance for a million dollars. And again, we see the players that are here and we talked about all the players in the top 16, but let me run through that list again. Yes, please. Of the people who didn't make it to top 16, yes. right? So it was John Takauchi, Nemo, Bonchan, Kakeru. We're not, I mean, unless he comes to the last chance qualifiers, we may have a Capcom Cup with no Kakeru, which just feels completely wrong. One of the, one of the highest earners so far in Street Fighter right. 6. Right, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then Moke, Dogura, Nishiken, Damn. Momochi. Momochi lost to Bonchan and a player named Satoru, uh, Higuchi, Kichipa, Goichi, uh, Hibiki, Johnny, uh, Fenrich, Aqua, Eita, Tachikawa, Hikaru, Haitani, Sakonoko. Sakonoko. Shuto, Shuto as well. MOV, Koji KOG, and Urio. These are all players who entered the tournament and they didn't make top 16. And it's only like a fraction of <laughs> how many people have entered. Like there's so many other names, so many Ugh. really talented players in Japan. Uh, it's it's crazy this 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 region but you know as we mentioned we talk about how you know this this region is always super talented but the interesting thing is Bav Cup was won obviously by uh, the Dominican the Republic. Dominican Republic that's right <laughs> right so you're right that the regions definitely are starting the, like the the parity is there but in terms of just absolute <laughs> Number of players to land area <laughs> ratio. Yes. Japan cannot be stopped in terms of how many strong players they have. Again, Truly. 925 entrants. God, 925 entrants for the region Sheesh. qualifier for that island right there. Whereas, you know, back when we had Battle by the Bay, we had 60 some players for Street Fighter <laughs> Alpha 2, and we we're like, can you believe we've never had a tournament this big in our life? And now we have a <laughs> 925 man online tournament and online. Uh, for a chance to win a million dollars. Mago said it in his interview. He was like, I never would have thought we'd be winning, like playing for this kind of prize. And man, for someone who's been. Same thing with da Daigo too. He's like, I'd like to thank past me for putting up with every <laughs> every negative thing that the, the media has, has said about gaming. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I, I've always said that, you know, if you asked me if we could be at this point like 15 years ago. Ain't would, no way, I brother. Been like, I'd be like, I'd be I'm doing this for fun. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'd be long. And I was like, you know, fighting games may get to that point, but I'll have long be passed and in my grave, I said you know, same. for like 50 years. And the fact that we're playing for a million dollars in 2024 is absolutely insane. Yeah, man. and you guys get to be along for the ride, man. It is a magical and, and really wondrous time, I feel like, for gaming in general, but for the yeah. FGC, oh, yeah. man, it is ridiculous. And we got so much more to look forward to. Obviously, it's just the very beginning. This is 2024 and the start of, first of all, Happy New Year. And second of all, I'm glad you guys are all here with us. It's going to be a, a, a pretty significant bloodbath for the next couple of weekends, <laughs> but we got to get it through one event at a time. You guys have been tuning in to the top 16 of the Capcom Pro Tour for the Japan Qualifier. You don't want to miss it because the next day it's going to be just as insane. From all of us to you as we chow down on our 
cheese and chips. We hope you guys get to do the same and continuing on in our journey together in the FTC. As all of us, Vicious and James Chen and everybody in the back, see you guys. We appreciate your time. We'll see you for the next one. Take care.